وی من نخشم وی کام داینا تاخ بچوان قد گاش و خیله بايله قطع وی وی من نخشم وی کام داینا تاخ بچوان قد گاش و خیله بايله قطع این ویله وی جاره So why is Allah saying to him the following ayah? Stay away, ya Muhammad, from idols. You're supposed to be a follower of Jesus, and you use the words like that. Well, it's not my words. I, I, it's not my words. It's the words of Allah. Are you embarrassed of Allah? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! This is the moment that you all have been waiting for. For, 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 for. We are live! Live, 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 live. You're listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor and Christian Polemicist. Polemicist, Polemicist, Polemicist. Do all you for Christ, an enemy of Allah and his messenger. Messenger, 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 messenger. This is your favorite YouTuber. Now, speaking from Cave. Hira, 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 Hira. Rob Christian. Christian, 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 Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. Houston. We are ready for takeoff. Oh, 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 oh. We are live, baby. We are back, baby. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. I hope everybody is doing great. God bless you, uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Also, of course, the Muslims who are maybe here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my beloved admins in the blue, God bless you, brother Phil Herrera in the house, Christian N, welcome, nice to see you, 
امير عادل واتس اب بادي واتس اب واتس اب جايز اكس واي زي اب باي فرنزي اور فرنزي سوري اف ام بوتش يور نيم اي ستيل هاف ايشوز ويت يور نيم ماي فريند بول اف كلوي كلوي سيستر كلوي ان ذا هاوس سلام المسيح peace and blessings to all of you i hope i did not forget to mention one of the names of our beloved uh, admins i'm sure more admins will join later when finally sharia uh, tube will decide to push out the notifications so we'll see we have also of course our beloved nightbot a nice bot that will spam all kind of links for you uh, as you see so we uh, have access to this bot uh, that we programmed So don't confuse them with the he- real human guys. Uh, also, our regulars, our new subscribers, new visitors, welcome. Everybody is welcome. As long as you can behave and act like a human being, you are very welcome. I don't care what you are, what your belief is. Hello, Ben Joseph. Nice to see you. Uh, Sister Julie, a jam. What's up? I think you are new. Not sure. Just Janice, Zoreda Ortiz, another regular. Nice to see you guys. Red Prophet. Uh, one of the regulars, Narrow Gate. Nice to see you again. Uh, so many people already here. That's awesome, guys. Keep inviting and share the link on social media, guys. Please, as you know, guys, uh, all of my social media accounts are uh, always at attack. Uh, I'm always shadow banned on YouTube, so I need your help, guys. For the people who do not know, uh, my main TikTok account, the above one here, Rob Christian under underscore, was banned for at least a week. T- permanently banned and thanks to the lord i had an option in the form of an appeal that i sent to the owners of tiktok uh, the chinese uh, safety team because remember tiktok is a chinese company so i sent them a, a, a message and i said hey do you know who, who i am do you know who rob christian is unban me or else just like muhammad said to the christians up north to the byzantine empire convert or else a slim teslim <laughs> and uh, within a couple of days they unbanned me again and this is not the first time guys <laughs> yeah for some reason guys they keep unbanning me and i keep get banged but they keep unbanning me while i'm permanently banned so that's awesome so uh, you know because of uh, the muslims of course muslims are flagging our videos they are flagging our channels because of them I keep getting banned. So, uh, my dear brother in the Lord, uh, Ahmed X Muslim, and he goes also by the name of David. David gave me uh, an account for f- as a gift for free. Uh, I have only two accounts, guys. There is a fake account with two uh, underscores, double underscores. That's not my account. That's a wannabe, a wannabe who is pretending to be me. So, I have only two accounts, as you see. Underscore and underscore two. This is my backup channel on TikTok. Dave, yeah, brother David Peter Brown. Guys, give him some love. Uh, a dear brother of mine in the Lord. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Make, maybe uh, Phil Herrera can drop the link to his YouTube channel. Uh, guys, uh, we have a lot of awesome brothers and sisters who are there to back us up. So, again, a shout out to brother David, uh, a.k.a. Ahmed X Muslim. Uh That I love to go live with. Uh, I was live with him a couple of days now for, uh, on TikTok. Maybe if you noticed, maybe you didn't notice. Uh, while being sick, I'm still uh, recovering, guys. I'm still under the weather. Maybe you're hearing from my voice. Uh, I can't talk too loudly. Uh, my voice, my throat is hurting. My throat is hurting. So keep me in your prayers, guys. Uh, pray for my health so that I can come back harder than ever. And pray for my admins, the names in the blue, God bless them. Uh, they are always doing an amazing job uh, in the background, taking care of the live chat, the comment section under my videos, uh, providing the references, and also the timestamps, last but not least. So please, we need your prayers, guys. Christians, brothers and sisters, don't underestimate the powers of prayers, please. Uh, what happened to me? Uh, nothing happened, brother. Nothing happened, Mr. AYQ. I got banned on TikTok, but uh, the Chinese decided to unban me again, a uh, permanent ban. But I got my main account back, and I uh, uh, I have also now a second account. So subscribe or follow me on both accounts, guys, because I often go live when I have time also on TikTok with uh, brothers 
I love to visit channels of uh, Christians to, you know, uh, uh, to back them up, to help them with the Islamic sources, to to debate Muslims. Maybe you've seen me debating on TikTok, guys. Uh, so please join us now and then. When you see me go live, uh, we have awesome, we have had awesome debates. And actually, within a week, two Muslims left Islam. Uh, they left Islam and they became Christians. Two days ago, it happened again with uh, Brother Ahmed on his channel. Another Muslim left Islam, Rami, and he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. So yeah, we are we are causing a lot of emotional damage. And when you're emotionally damaged and uh, a seed is planted, then you have no other option but to leave Islam and come back home. So we have hope for any Muslim, right guys? We have hope for any Muslim out there. So this is why we are doing this. And keep us in your prayers, guys. Please, please pray for us. Pray for our health. Pray for uh, <coughs> for, uh, for our families. Uh, we are risking also their lives, don't forget. So when we try to expose this evil cult of Satan, which is Islam. Islam will never be the truth. Islam was never the truth. And Muhammad was never a true prophet. He claimed prophethood, though. He was not the first or last. We have, uh, we have had many uh, fake prophets. As we speak, guys, there's a guy in Lebanon, in the uh, Middle East, in Lebanon. Uh, he's working with another woman, and they have uh, around 1 million subscribers on YouTube. And he claims to be the new prophet. He claims that he's sent by Allah. So Muhammad was not the first and certainly not the last. And the Bible warns us against false prophet who will come in sheep clothing, but they are nothing but wolves right so muhammad is not the fo uh, last prophet uh, uh who will come and pretend to be a prophet but we know that he is the most obvious fake prophet in the history of all the prophets please muslims please we do not hate you you're very welcome here we love to have conversations with you but uh, our live shows are uh, are to shake you up and show you what your Islamic sources say about Islam, about your prophet, etc. And if you really, if you're, if you're really someone who allows himself to use his brains, then there is no other option for you in 2022 to leave Islam. Leave Islam and hopefully we will pray for you to come back home to your Lord and my Lord, the only living God, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Guys, before we start, before we start, this is the topic of today, and it's a very uh, a bright topic. I will uh, take deep dives uh, with you guys, and we will follow again the advice of Yasser Qadi. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep, yeah, like Yasser Qadi, we're going uh, to take his, uh, you know, advice, and we're going to take a deep dive in the Islamic books and see what they say. I'm not fabricating. People who have been following my uh, uh, live streams, my shows, my videos. You have never seen me. You will never see me fabricate anything. Whatever we present on the screen is directly from the Islamic books. If Muslims don't want to take those uh, sources, please burn your books. I mean, as you see here, uh, Uthman in the seventh century burned the Quran. He barbecued the Quran. If you, uh, I mean, if you want to follow in his footsteps, Burn the Quran and burn your uh, tafsir, a hadith, if you don't like them. Because everything that we show you is directly from your books. You don't like it? Not my problem, not my business. It's on you. It's your janaza. It's your funeral to either accept the truth or just stay in Islam. I'm nothing but a messenger. Please don't shoot the messenger. I'm only reading. Right? Again, guys, please subscribe to both of my channels on TikTok if you have a TikTok account. Guys, some people say, um, I'd rather not install TikTok. I understand you. There's a lot of filth on TikTok, right? Many, uh, especially the ladies, trying to make money by showing their naked body and, uh, you know, on TikTok. But it's everywhere, uh, guys. Let, let us be honest. It's on YouTube. It's on TikTok. It's on, uh, 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 on Twitter. Everywhere, wherever you go, right? That's the problem. That's the other evil side of social media. So, guys, just... Don't watch that kind of stuff. Join us when we go live. Uh, join my brother Ahmed, the ex-Muslim. Uh, join other people who are live streaming or upload videos. 
So don't watch that nasty stuff. I know, guys. I know. But don't forget that most Muslims do join TikTok for the nasty stuff. But they also, a lot of them, and I believe that there are more Muslims on TikTok than on YouTube from talking from experience. They do some tsunami, then join us, and we love to debate them. Guys, I'm not going to stream today on TikTok as we speak because uh, my TikTok accounts are heavily on fire. So, you know, just to take off the heat. Maybe next time. We'll see if the Lord wills. Let us actually, guys, before we, uh, before we start reading the Islamic books, let us pray. What do you think, guys? Let us pray and ask the living God of the Holy Bible to bless everybody who's watching, including the Muslims. Bless the Muslims with the truth, O Lord. And bless everybody who's here, our admins, us, our families, loved ones. Bless the live stream so that we can have an awesome, blessed time together. Please invite, share the link on social media, guys. Let us do this. And after the prayer, guys, I'm going to uh, provide uh, uh, my Skype ID so that Muslims will uh, call us. I'll open Skype because I don't like to be interrupted uh, with a call during the prayer. So I'm going to drop my Skype ID soon and open Skype, but after the prayer. So I ask you to pray with me. And let us pray the way our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. So pray with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And also let us do that in the Arabic to show you how beautiful the Lord's Prayer is in different languages. And Mayak language, uh, the way Jesus gave it to us in the Aramaic also. So first the Arabic. أَبَانَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَوَاتِ لِيَتَقَدَّسْ إِسْمُكْ لِيَأْتِ مَلَكُوتُكْ لِتَكُنْ مَشِيئَتُكْ كَمَا فِي السَّمَاءَ كَذَلِكَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ عَاطِنَا خُبْزُنَا كَفَافَ يَوْمِنَا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا خَطَايَانَا كَمَا نَحْنُ نَغْفِرْ لِمَنْ أَخْطَى إِلَيْنَا ولا تدخلنا في تجربة لكن نجنا من الشرير لأن لك القوة والمجد الآن وإلى الأبد الآبدين آمين آمين Last but not least in the Aramaic language the way he gave it to us the way Jesus glory to his name taught us أبوند بشمايو نثقداش شموخ تيثي ملكوثوخ نهوي سبيونوخ أي كانت بشمايو أف برو هبلا لحمو سنقونان يومون وشبقلن حوبين وحطوهين أي كانوا دوف إحنا نشبقان الحايوبين لو تعلان يسيونو إلو فاصولا من بيشو ميتو ضيلو خيم الكوثو حيلو تشبحتو العلم العلمين آمين 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 How beautiful is that in the Aramaic right guys? Beautiful right? Goosebumps Rob Goosebumps The way Jesus gave it to us in his language Beautiful Glory to your name, O Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Please bless this live stream. Bless everybody who is watching, O Lord. We believe in you. We worship you, O living God of the Holy Bible. Glory to your name. All right, guys. God bless you. God bless your children and loved ones. Let us start. As always, speaking from cave, Hira, 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 Hira. We are live, live, live. Live. Let's go. All right, guys. What's up? What's up? Let's do this. Are you ready, guys? Yeah, it sounds like Hebrew, right, Shai? Uh, don't forget that Aramaic is the oldest language on this planet. So, yeah, Hebrew, I believe that Hebrew uh, came from the Aramaic, right? Because remember, uh, uh, Abraham himself, our father Abraham, was a Chaldean and he spoke Aramaic. And then you, you know, from that Semitic language, you had another Semitic language. And I believe it's a daughter language, a daughter language of uh, the Aramaic Hebrew. And much later, you had also uh, uh, Arabic, 
But before Arabic, you had the Aramaic dialect that we today speak is the Syriac language. And we believe, actually, if you study the Quran carefully, I believe that the Quran is nothing but uh, a liturgy. Uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, uh, I always forget the word for it. Lectionary, yeah, lectionary. Even the word Quran comes from the Aramaic, Quryono. Quryono or Quryana. Did you catch it? Brother Sam Shamon would say, Quryana. I, in my dialect, in my Aramaic dialect, I say, Quryono. Quryono. So actually, the real, the old Quran was in Aramaic. But later, much later, They corrupted it and they changed it. Uh, they cr made it like they. It became like a bastard version because the original Quran, I believe, because we have many traces uh, in the Aramaic in the Quran. I believe that they changed it because uh, it was a lectionary. It's uh, you know it it confirmed. It's like the uh, uh, the Peshitta, right? The Peshitta. Something like that. Remember the Peshitta? Something like that. It was. It used to be something like that. But later, people like uh, Abdel Malik, uh, when he became Caliph, people like Abdel Malik, when he became Caliph uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the seventh uh, century, uh, eighth century, let's say eighth century, uh, beginning of the eighth century, uh, when he came into power, when he came into power, he changed everything. So big chance. Uh, big chance that even the name Muhammad was actually Jesus because Muhammad is the praised one. Who is the praised one? Of course, Jesus. So the name Muhammad could have not been uh, a true person, an Islamic person. It could have been Jesus himself. Since the Quran is nothing, the original Quran was nothing but a, uh, a, a, a book that confirmed the Bible, right? Yeah, I know X Y Z. I've seen that. Uh, I've talked to uh, about that uh, with people. So yeah, uh, guys. Unfortunately, we can't. We don't have the hundred percent evidence for that. But we are we are taking our conclusions. So now and then, and people like Brother Jay Smith, he loves to talk about that for hours. I myself, people who know me, I I care more about what Islam of today says, right? Uh, what the Quran of today says, I love to take deep dives in the Quran and expose the Quran within, expose Muhammad and Allah from within. I take deep dives in the tafsir. Uh, I leave that kind of stuff for other people who uh, love to do their kind of investigation, right? So it's good, guys, to cover all the things, right? Imagine if everybody talks about the same thing. That won't work, to be honest with you. We need all kind of people who investigate all kind of books and uh, uh, use their uh, skills and whatnot. Not like, not a lexicon, not a, not a lexicon, a lectionary. If you don't know the meaning of a lectionary, Google it, please. Google it. Don't confuse a lexicon. Lexicon is basically a dictionary. Don't confuse that with a, uh, uh, with the other word, okay? All right. Now that we have prayed, guys, let us let us start. Are you ready, guys? Let me first start easy because Muslims, you know how Muslims are. They, uh, you know, uh, they are not the most smart people out there. And I'm talking from experience, okay? I've been debating Muslims for many years now. Most of the Muslims, they don't have... Uh, 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 much knowledge about Islam. They go by their emotions, they go by their feelings instead of what the actual uh, books say. Whenever we show them what their books say, they get angry with us. Why are you angry with me? I'm only reading. For example, here, this hadith. Which kind of healthy mind, what kind of healthy mind in 2022 would accept this? Look, Sunan Abi Daud, hadith number 66. Sunan Abi Dawood, hadith number 66. Look what it says. Narrated Abu Sa'ad al-Qudri, or Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, al-Qudri for short, the people asked Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, S-A-W-S. <laughs> It's Morse code, by the way. This guy is beep, 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 Morse code. Beep, 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 Morse code, yeah. Can we perform evolution? Can we wash ourselves? 
out of the well of Buddha, can we do uh, ablution? Can we wash in this? And guys, don't forget, it's a very small well. A small well that was called Buddha in the time supposedly of Muhammad. It, uh, which is a well into uh, which uh, menstrual clothes, dead dogs, and stinking things, garbage were thrown. Muhammad, now here's the response of Muhammad. He replied, water is pure and nothing, uh, and it's not devoured by anything. What? What did you say, ya Rasulullah? Emotional, damn it. Like, ya Rasulullah. Like, ya Rasulullah. There are menstrual clothes that have menstrual blood of women in it. Nisa, right? Then Nisa, hide on Nisa, the hide. The menstruation blood, right? So blood in it, it has dead dogs in it, carcasses, corpses of dead dogs, and stinking things. So garbage, literally. And Muhammad, I mean, the, uh, the, the scientist of his lifetime, Muhammad said, it's pure, brother and sister. Nothing devils the water. I mean, this is a prophet of God, a true prophet of God who is not trolling He's not trolling his people, uh, the, 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 his followers, because remember, Islam is a cult, and Muhammad is the cult leader, and Muslims are uh, his followers. If he was truly a, the prophet of God, a, the perfect example according to Islam, he should have not said, go ahead, go wash your uh, uh, body in it. And guys, when they do ablution, uh, uh, guys, for the people who do not know, wudu, they put water in their nose, literally the water goes inside their nose, it goes inside their mouth, uh, and they wash behind their ears, their elbows, oh, everywhere, their feet. So imagine, guys, if this, if this water goes inside your body, this bacteria and viruses, all kind of nasty stuff will enter your body. You could really become sick to the point that you even can die from it. Now, some Muslims, guys, maybe have noticed this whenever you brought it up in your debates, in your personal debates, they said, well, this well, Rob, Christian brother, Rob, Christian brother, this well is a, is a running well. It's, it's running, so the water is continually uh, refreshed. But wait, you forgot one tiny detail. It still has the dead dogs in it and the garbage in it. I challenge you, I challenge you to go inside a well. If you see a well, if you see a dog, throw a couple of dogs in it that are dead. Throw the garbage of a couple of weeks ago, throw it also in it, and go uh, wash your body and drink from that water. Let's see what will happen to you. If you, if you really be, uh, believe your prophet, let's see what will happen to you. They put the water exactly, Brother Phil Herrera, as he said it. I already said, but again, as Phil Herrera already mentioned it again, they put the water inside their nose, inside their mouth. So that amount of bacteria and that uh, it can cause all all kind of diseases. Have you never heard of E. coli? E. coli virus. E. coli. Uh, it's, it's a bacteria. Maybe uh, is it a bacteria? I think it's a bacteria. Maybe that that will that you often find in uh, garbage, uh, in sewers, uh, uh, where you have uh, you know. E. coli. Yeah, E. coli. Is it a bacteria? I think it's a bacteria, right? You'll find it in a human uh, waste also, right? So Muslims, why are you believing a 7th century savage caveman? Why do you believe that this guy is a prophet man? How can a prophet of God give you this advice? It's okay, go wash your body, go drink from it, go, go put the water inside your nose and mouth. Nothing will happen to you, it's pure. I mean, I mean, come on, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is a prophet of God? Muslims, really? This is a prophet of God? Guys, keep inviting Muslims. Keep inviting uh, people on social media, please. Help me to help you guys. I need your help. All of my social media accounts are all under heavy fire, under heavy attack. I need your help, Christians. Please, let us not be lazy. I'm not calling you lazy, but please, guys, help me to help you. We need to help these Muslims out of their misery. Islam is nothing but a huge nightmare. 
They are living in, in a nightmare. They don't have a guarantee of salvation. Muhammad himself, uh, in Surah Al-Ahqaf, Muhammad himself did not know what Allah would do to him. Ma'adri, he said, I don't know what Allah would do to me. Please, guys. This is why we are doing this, right, guys? We're not doing, I know Islam is funny. Islam is nothing but pure comedy. But there are over a billion Muslims out there who believe that Islam is the truth and Muhammad is a true prophet. And especially warn your children. Your children don't allow their brains to be infiltrated by Islam and Muslims here in the West, especially who try to paint Islam like the most peaceful cult out there. Please warn your children. Teach your children. Warn your children against Islam. Educate your kids, exactly. Don't allow your kids to be deceived by the cult of Satan, Allah, and his satanic prophet Muhammad. Now guys, let me bring up one of my one of my one of my heroes out there, the John of Damascus, the polemicist of his lifetime. Guys, this awesome warrior, this warrior of his time from the 8th century, big, uh, late 7th century, uh, 8th century John of Damascus, John Damaskeen, right? And in Arabic, we call him Yohanna. Do you hear it? Yohanna, John. Yohanna at Dimashqi. Yohanna Dimashqi. John of Damascus. John Damaskeen. I, for me, guys, this, this, this is one of my champions. He, is a, he was a true champion of his lifetime. Have you heard of him, guys? John of Damascus? How many people know about him? Guys, it's okay if you never heard of him, but I'm going to... Uh, teach you what he used to say about Islam, what he used to do, how he used to debate Muslims. And he actually showed the world that Islam is nothing but comedy. This guy that you see here, guys, in front of you, he, he proved that Islam is nothing but comedy. And Muslims, because of him, guys, they started to feel the heat and they had to come with all kind of tafasir. Guys, have you ever asked yourself, why are there tafasir? Guys, tafasir, tafasir that came hundreds and hundreds of years of la later after uh, the death of Muhammad. The tafasir, the tafsirs are created to defend Islam, to defend the Quran. Why? Because of people like John of Damascus. John of Damascus, guys, he gave us an awesome lesson. He taught us how to use polemics. Why? Why, guys? Because apologetics will not work in the beginning. I'm not telling you guys, maybe some people, because you're hearing me talking about ap apologetics, I'm not telling you to not use uh, apologetics. Please don't force words in my mouth. I myself, I am a hardcore polemicist. I myself, I'm a hardcore polemicist. Yes, you can use apologetics with Muslims, but that's the second step. Why? Because Muslims are a different kind of breed, literally. Because the moment more Muslims are born in their Islamic families, they learn from their uh, parents, their imams in the madrasas, in their Islamic schools, we call that madrasas. They teach them uh, to build a, a concrete wall around themselves, right? So to break down, to take down that wall that they've created, the only weapon that will happen in the beginning to plant a seed, it's polemics. Use offense, polemics. Second step, if you are noticing that you planted a seed and you are sensing that the Muslim is starting to doubt Islam, go ahead with the uh, uh, apologetics. Use apologetics. But apologetics is the second step after polemics. Guys, and I'm talking from experience. I've learned from the best. And this is why I call John of Damascus the polemicist, the champion of his lifetime. So guys, let me talk about John Damascus, John Damascus, John uh, uh, of Damascus, and as we call him in the Arabic, Yohanna Dimashqi. Let me uh, talk about him because I, I, I really feel, I feel it's necessary to talk about such people to, for everybody to learn 
why his work was really important and why we should learn from such people. Guys, and I want you to be really focused because his story is very, very, very interesting, guys. Very interesting. Maybe you want to take notes. Let me tell you something about John of Damascus. John of Damascus, brothers and sisters, John of Damascus, as I said, is one of my favorite polemicists of his time. He used to debate Islam. He used to expose Islam uh, in the 8th century. And he used the Quran in defense of Christianity. Imagine. And he turned the argument against the black stone kissers in the 8th century and accusing these Muslims of being mutilators of the Godhead. Mutilators of the Godhead. John of Damascus, John Damaskin, Yohanna Dimashqi that you see here, this painting about him. He said, and I quote, regarding verse that we find verse 171 in Surah An-Nisa chapter 4. So chapter 4, 171. Chapter 4, 171. Uh, let me open Skype. Okay, I forgot to open Skype. You see, guys, I forgot to open Skype. But it's okay. Maybe there is a Muslim who can call us. It's never too late to open Skype. Right, guys? Uh, thank you, David. Uh, David sent me a message. Rob... Christian, you're doing an amazing job, a great work. Thank you, I appreciate it. Please, please, uh, guys, don't thank me. We are here only to serve, to serve the truth and for the glory of Christ so that many Muslims will be saved. I'm here to serve you guys. I'm your humble servant, please. But I'm happy that many people are learning. They are learning and they are here to listen to what we have to say. Please share our work. If you go to my about page, guys, on my YouTube channel, if you go to my about page, you will see that I gave you full permission to download my videos, re-upload them, maybe create short clips, whatever you like to do with my videos. As long, guys, as long you keep my videos for free, and if it's not too much ass, put my credentials, put my YouTube channel uh, in the uh, uh, in the description box, and maybe uh, if it's also not too much ass, in a pinned comment, right? So that people know who the owner of the of the video is all right guys only if you can if not it's not too much as okay so my uh, skype is open if there are muslims let them call me let me pin up my own comment all right if there are muslims please call us open mic for muslims and muslims alone christians please don't call me please guys P i know sometimes uh it's hard you know rules could can be harsh but if you are a christian please don't call me if you uh, only muslims all right so we have awesome live stream ahead of us, guys. I have many hours to share with you, so don't worry. Uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, uh, hopefully, if the Lord wills, Lord willing, Deus vult, this could be uh, actually a, a, like a documentary. It's going to be more awesome if the Lord wills than any Netflix show, any uh, TV show. Because here we love to talk about the truth. If you want to waste your time with video, video games or... Amazon Prime. What what uh, what what do uh, what uh, what do kids watch these days? I don't I can't, I don't know all these names of these streaming uh, uh, apps. But anyway, we are here to learn, guys. We are here to share uh, knowledge with one another. So let let us talk about John of Damascus. Regarding chapter four, let me type it out. Maybe you want to take notes. Chapter four, Surah An Nisa, the women, Ayah what Ayah one seventy one. John of Damascus debated the Muslims about it. The, this very awesome champion of his lifetime, John of Damascus. And he said, and I quote, regarding chapter 4, Ayah 171. He said, As long you Muslims say that Christ is the word of Allah, Kalimat Allah, and Ruh Allah, his spirit, why do you accuse us Christians of being associators i.e. Mushrikeen, John of Damascus said. And he continued, For the word, Al-Kalima, Kalimat Allah, and Ruh Allah, the Spirit of Allah, of God, is inseparable from, of, from that in which it naturally, naturally has existence. Again, For the word, John of Damascus said, For the word, Al-Kalima, and the Ruh, the Spirit, is inseparable from 
that in which it naturally has existence. Therefore, he said, if Kalimat Allah, the word of Allah, the word of God is in God, then it's obvious that Jesus himself is God. Glory to his name. That's what John of Damascus said. And he continued, if, however, he is outside of God, then according to you Muslims, God is without kalima, without any word, and without any spirit. John of Damascus, guys, here meant, then your Allah, O Muslims, is nothing but a dead rock, a stone idol that is dead without any spirit. And actually, guys, if you want to take notes, that's what Islam teaches. Allah is not a spirit. Meaning, Allah is a stone, a rock, a dead idol. Samad. Remember Samad, guys? Samad, one of the uh, tafasir for the word Samad, Allah Samad, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, Ayah 2. Allah is a stone idol, a, a, a stone, literally a rock. So this is these are the words of John of Damascus. Imagine, guys. He was not scared. He was a hardcore polemicist. And I love him. Uh, he's one of my heroes, to be honest with you. And I learned a lot of, from him. <sighs> and guys, John of Damascus that you see here continued saying, Consequentially, by avoiding the introduction of an associate with God, you have mutilated him. You have mutilated God. Literally, you have cut off his limbs, you Muslims. Because you say, Allah cannot... Allah is not, Allah is outside of creation, meaning you, you Muslims have limited Allah. Your God is limited. Allah is the God of cannot, because he's nothing but a dead idol, a stone, a rock. And he said, and I, and I quote, John said, John of Damascus said, it would be far better for you Muslims to say that he has an associate than to mutilate him as if you were dealing with a stone or a piece of wood or some other inanimate object. That's what John of Damascus said to the Muslims. And after hearing this, guys, the Muslims started to feel the heat and they had to do something about it. Uh, guys, watch what happened. And he continues saying, thus you Muslims speak untruly when you call us Christians associators, right? Mushrikeen, associators. We respond, we Christians respond, John of Damascus said to the Muslims, by calling you Muslims mutilators of God. Wow! Wow! Emotional damage! Guys, if uh, John of Damascus had sound effects like these, he would have played this sound effect. <laughs> beautiful, right guys? Isn't it beautiful what John of Damascus was doing to the Muslims? By using their own argument against them, hardcore polemicist. Your Allah is a God of cannot. He cannot. He's a dead idol. Right? You literally cut off the hands and feet of Allah from underneath him. Especially his limbs, his legs. I remember Muslims teach us that Allah has a leg. I mean, if Allah has only a leg and you Muslims cut off his leg, that means uh, the Allah uh, will look funny, man. Allah would have no uh, stability. He's a stone idol. <laughs> Uh, so guys, this was far more useful than any mere refutation of an anti-Christian claim drawn from biblical texts or appeals to classical philosophy. John himself, brothers and sisters, based his arguments on Quranic thought and turned the argument of Muslims on itself. Christians then started to refute Islam by using John, John's refutation. So Muslims, guys, as I said earlier, Muslims started to feel the heat and try to do tarqiya. So they had to do something about uh, what John said about Islam. Literally, John said, you Muslims, you, your God is funny. Your God is, uh, is, uh, is mute, a mutilated God. Islam is nothing but comedy. That's basically, in a nutshell, what John of Damascus said to the Muslims about their false cult. So the Muslims tried to fix the problem, and the, uh, the Muslims went to their caliph of that time, uh, that caliph was called Caliph Caliph Al Ma'mun. Let me put his name in the live chat, guys. This is really very interesting information, and I I hope, guys, I hope you will take notes because this is this is really beautiful stuff. And you see how early Muslims uh, started to do tarqiyah, right? 
mental gymnastics, it started very early, right guys? And that's how tafsir and all of these hadith came to existence to uh, defend Islam, right? Because of people like John of Damascus. So guys, don't think uh, low about John of Damascus, please. He is a true champion. So the Muslims went to their caliph, al Ma'mun, and they said to their caliph, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, right? That's what they call uh, a caliph. Ya Amir al Mu'minin, O Prince of the Ummah, literally. Ya Caliph al Mu'minin, O Caliph al Ma'mun, they told him, the Christians, the Christians like John of Damascus, that you see here, guys, pushed us in a corner. We need to answer them and find a solution for this disaster. He literally showed everybody that Allah is a, a, a mutilated a false idol. So we need to we need to defend Islam from uh, John of Damascus and others like John of Damascus. So Caliph al Ma'mun guys ordered the scholars of Islam to be gathered and asked them, is there a prophetic hadith from Muhammad or an ayah in the Quran which says the word of Allah is created? That's the question, guys. That's the question, the main question that uh, that that was basically uh, uh, that came up because of John of Damascus. Guys, do you, do you see? Do you understand what is going on here, guys? This is one of the main doctrines, right? So John of Damascus literally destroyed one of the main do uh, uh, doctrines. Is uh, is the word of Allah created or uncreated? Let's see. Hello. <laughs> Donkey, the same Dutch guy, Islam defender, and his fanboys, or his uh, boyfriends, uh, ultimate uh, donkey. Yeah, guys. Uh, last time, the youth, some people thought that I'm not blocking them. I'm literally blocking them, and they keep creating new accounts. So, guys, don't allow them to distract you. Let us continue, because they know what we are teaching is very damaging. So, guys, the question was. Can, can, and that's what the caliph asked the scholars of Islam in the 8th century. Can you find any hadith from the mouth of our prophet? Or can we find any ayah in the Quran that says that the word of Allah is created? Any scholar, any imam? Caliph al-Mamun asked. Anyone? The scholars answered, no, there isn't. The scholars, guys, let me type it out. The scholars said to their caliph, no, there is no hadith from the mouth of our prophet. There is no ayah in the Quran that says that the Quran is created. So among themselves, guys, you will see from now how they started to debate one another. Guys, are you, are you enjoying what we are teaching, guys? Are you, are you benefiting from this story? Are you benefiting? I hope this, you will do something with it. You will benefit from this. Because, guys, this is the beginning of Islam. The caliphs, the caliphs started to feel the heat, so they gathered all of their giant scholars of their time to do something about John's polem uh, polemics. Always? That's great, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. But guys, because I've put a lot, a lot of hours and hours to gather all this information and to share it with you. What, what, what the early scholars of Islam, how they tried to defend the idea is the Quran. Is the Quran created or uncreated? Right? The Caliph, guys, Caliph al Ma'mun, Caliph al Ma'mun of his lifetime, he also asked them, Is there a hadith from the, our Prophet Muhammad or a verse in the Quran that says, Ruh Allah is created? Because remember, Muhammad in Surah Al uh, Was it Surah Al Kaf? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Muhammad said, I don't know what the what the spirit is. Muhammad in the Quran itself, he did not get the information from Allah. Remember that story when the uh, Meccans together with the Jews, they started to examine Muhammad and they gave him three questions. Do you remember my many live shows about that uh, examination? One of the questions was, tell us about the spirit. What is the ruh? Muhammad said, Madri, I don't know. 13 above, appreciated. God bless you for your kind words. We're here to serve guys, please. Uh, I'm nothing but your humble servant. Please, guys, don't give me too much uh, honor, guys. I don't deserve it. I'm a sinner. Please, I'm nothing but uh, uh, I, I'm nothing but uh, uh, your humble servant. Please, guys, please. All right. 
So, uh, John of Damascus created a huge disaster, a huge emotional damage for the Muslim scholars and the caliph of his time. Is Ruh Allah created? That was the second question. So, two main topics. Is the kalima, is kalimat Allah created? Is the word of Allah created? And is Ruh Allah created? They answered, so the scholar answered, no, ya Amir al Mu'mini, no, no, O Caliph, nowhere in the hadith or Quran does it say, nowhere in the hadith from the mouth of a prophet or any verse from the Quran, it says that Ruh Allah is created. So the scholars among themselves said, what should we do now? What should we do now? We have, we have a problem. How can we answer Christians like John of Damascus? How, what are we going to do now? They thought among themselves. So the caliph, so the caliph ordered them to go and say to the Christians, the word of Allah, Kalimat Allah, and Ruh of Allah are created. Imagine, guys, that's what the caliph said to the scholars. Go tell them. Guys, look, the early caliph ordered his own scholars, his imams, the giant scholars of that time, to say to the Christians, to people like John of Damascus, the word of Allah, Kalimat Allah, and Ruh Allah are created. <laughs> Imagine. Right? We know what the Spirit of God is. It's God Himself. God is alive. He is Spirit. But in Islam, Allah is not a Spirit. Everything is, uh, is created. If the Word of Allah is created and uh, the Spirit of Allah is created, what, what does that mean? What does that say about Allah? What does it say about Allah, ya Muslimun? Emotional damage! Guys, and if you have studied Islam, basic Islam, Let's see if this is another troll, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Are you going to flush the toilet, my friend? Flush the toilet on the face of Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, demonized Muslims. You see, guys, the demons are manifesting, right? You know why? Because they know every live stream, every live stream of Rob Christian is pure emotional damage exactly brother yeah yeah baby yeah <laughs> so guys imagine the caliph ordered his imams his scholars to go and spread the word the word of allah kalimat allah and ruh allah the spirit of allah are created right that created a huge disaster all of the scholars disagreed so guys what's going on the scholars sense that there is a problem yeah amir al mu'minin oh caliph we are not agreeing with what you are telling us to do. And they did not accept what he said, except two scholars. Two scholars, guys. There was a guy called Ibn Dirham and Jaham Ibn Safwan. They agreed with the caliph, but the rest of them, they did not accept it. How, how can the word of Allah be created? That's a problem. And guys, that's in the beginning, the Mutazzalites. That, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. There is a group. There was a huge group. In, the, in early Islam, called the Mutazzalites, who believe that the Quran, for example, or the word of Allah, are created. Else you have shirk, right? You have Allah, supposedly, and you have his word. If they are create, if they are, um, if, if, Allah, if, if Allah is uncreated, and the word is uh, uh, uncreated, that means we have shirk. We have two, we have two, we have two things, that are eternal. That doesn't make sense to them. So guys, either way, if you say that the word is uncreated, that means the word, and since Jesus in the Quran, in chapter 4, Ayah 171, he is kalimat Allah, he is ruh Allah, that means Jesus in Islam is eternal, equally divine with Allah. We have two divine beings. And if you're going to say, and if you're going to say that kalimat Allah, the word of Allah, is created then you have a problem too so either way guys they had no answer they contradicted one another they disagreed and guys we're talking about the early muslims here who debated one another and what happens next guys is very interesting 
Very interesting stuff. Guys, so two scholars, Ibn Dirham and Jahan bin Safwan, they agreed with the caliph, caliph uh, al-Ma'mun, and they said, yes, Ruh Allah, Kalimat Allah are created. Then you had a famous guy, and guys, I hope it will ring a bell. I love to use his books. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal himself. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal himself. Remember that name, guys? Does it ring a bell? The Imam, the founder of one of the four Sunni schools, the Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who uh, basically is the founder of the Hanbali Sunni school, Sunni uh, uh, madhab, right? Yes, cult, and they still don't have an answer because they are disagreeing with one another, right? The scholars had a conflict with one another. And we're talking about early scholars. These are considered to be the giant scholars, right? The early scholars who disagreed. Some of them said, no, no, the kalimat uh, Allah, ruh Allah are created. Others said, no, they are, cannot be un uh, created. Hello? <laughs> you see, guys, they don't, uh, you know... <clears throat> You know what, guys? If there's a Muslim who wants to call me, admins, I'm going to close Skype. You see? I'm going to close Skype because if every second they're going to call in, then there is no point. Uh, because they're here, guys, they, are, they have a mission. They want to distract us, right? So, admins, if there's a, a guy who's, who truly wants to debate me, right? First, let's, let's see if he's a, he's a troll or not. So, I'll, I will leave that to the admins. Guys, in the live chat, don't allow yourselves to be distracted. We have admins for that. Uh, admins take care of that if there's a, a muslim who truly wants to debate that's a different story maybe maybe we'll open skype so you see muslims you are forcing me not to pick up your phones because of uh, kids your brothers and sisters who are acting like uh, children bunch of trolls who cannot behave and that's why i always say guys truly truly i tell you there are no real men left in islam we have only kids and how can kids debate me how can Gitz refute me? I mean, if Muhammad would have been alive today, he would be really, really embarrassed of Muslims of today. Because there are no real men left. Truly, there are no real men left. Emotional damage! I mean, yeah. Yeah, baby. They are really emotionally embarrassed, emotionally damaged. They cannot refute what we have to say. So if you continue, guys, Ahmed ibn Hanbal himself called those scholars out and he called... Uh, Caliph Al Ma'mun, he they, he called them out and he said, "You are <laughs> literally, guys. Let me type it out." He said, "You are you scholars. You claim to be scholars. You Caliph, you claim to be a Muslim. You are all kufar." He literally called them kufar, guys. You are disbelievers for saying that Kalimat Allah and Ruh Allah are created. Damaging. So Muslims were in a huge conflict. Why? Because of John of Damascus. Now, do you understand why I consider him to be the champion and one of my heroes? Do you see, guys? Do you see the problem? Mm, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Guys, This is this good or what? Be honest. Is this good or what? And we need to talk about this because many Muslims... Even Muslims don't know what happened in early Islam. But this is truly what happened, right? After the death of Muhammad. You are a bunch of kuffar, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said to the scholars who agreed with the caliph. He said, and I continue, Imam Ahmed said, Allah's word, al kalimat Allah, is not created. And Ahmed ibn Hanbal claimed that the Quran does not say that Allah's word is created. So they captured... Ahmed ibn Hanbal, guys, literally, Caliph al Ma'mun ordered Ahmed ibn Hanbal to be caught and thrown in jail. And he was even tortured for 20 years. Who was tortured for 20 years, guys? Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal from the Hanbali school. Imagine, they, they, they captured him for calling them out and calling them disbelievers. You are a bunch of disbelievers for saying that Kalimat Allah is created. And guys, the Mutazilites were even killed for saying that Kalimat Allah and Ruh Allah are created. Especially about Kalimat Allah. 
right? They were hunted down by much later Muslims, and they even killed them, right? Imagine killing each other, early Muslims killing each other for only a conflict. But this is not only a conflict. This is a huge problem, as you see, a huge disaster that they had to solve. Why? Because of people like John of Damascus, right? John of Damascus really, really created a huge problem with his polemics. Now, do you understand why polemics is so damaging? Right? It will give Muslim scholars headaches. All right. So, Ahmed ibn Hanbal was thrown in jail and tortured for two decades for 20 years because of Caliph al Ma'mun, who believed that the word of Allah was created. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So the next caliph, guys, who came into power, who succeeded uh, Caliph al-Ma'mun, so the second caliph, after al-Ma'mun, who followed him, said, no, 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 we have to take that claim back, we have to retract that, because he agreed with Ahmed ibn Hanbal, that the word of Allah is uncreated. So the next caliph, guys, Took, uh, basically, he took Ahmed ibn Hanbal after two decades, after being tortured. He took him out of jail and uh, he agreed that the word of Allah is uncreated. So they literally changed their minds. <laughs> I mean, this is a huge doctrine in Islam. This is aqidah. How can you change your mind about such an important aqidah? You see, guys, scholars in Islam never agree on anything. They don't agree on anything. In the end, they will fight each other. They will murder each other. They will torture each other because Islam is nothing but a man-made cult. Of course, you're not going to agree. Imagine, guys, if the disciples of Christ, Peter, John, Matthew, and their uh, uh, students, right? Their students would go at each other's throats. What, have the, what would have the Muslims said? Or what about the uh, our church fathers going at each other's throats. What, do, what would the Muslims say about Christianity? But that's what literally happened. They killed each other. Muslims killed each other. They killed the Mutazilites for saying, for claiming that Allah's word is created. They literally butchered them. And uh, that next caliph, guys, the caliph after al Ma'mun, he was responsible for that and others that came after him too. So as you see, Muslim scholars among themselves started to debate, is kalimat Allah, is the word of Allah created or uncreated? We have a problem to solve. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So guys, the early Muslims tried to fix this disaster that people like John of Damascus created for them and came with the conclusion that the word of Allah must be uncreated, not realizing that John of Damascus just set a huge trap for them. By this claim, Muslims just created another disaster confirming that the Jesus in the Quran, that Islamic version of Jesus in the Quran is the uncreated kalima, right? By... By do saying that, that the kalima is uncreated, they literally confirmed what we have always said, what people like John of Damascus has always said. That means Jesus is, in Islam, he is the uncreated word, the uncreated word of Allah, that Allah in chapter 4, I 171, al-qaha, meaning he literally cast it down on Maryam, the Islamic Mary. Guys, are you taking notes? This is very important. They literally confirm that Jesus in Islam is the uncreated kalima, i.e. the uncreated word of God. By saying that they showed everybody, they confirmed that Jesus must be Allah then. Or at least equally divine with Allah. Are you getting it, guys? Are you taking notes? I hope you are. And please use this in your debates. Chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 171 is a huge disaster if you actually investigate it. Because the Quran in chapter 4, ayah 171 says, Jesus is kalimat Allah, he's the word of Allah, that Allah cast down, cast down from where? 
from where he is, according to Islam. That's outside of creation. So Jesus, guys, was always there with Allah outside of creation. What does that make him? Allah then cast him down as his word on Maryam from above. Guys, are you catching what is going on, how important this is? It's very important. This, this is the beginning of Islam, basically, after the death of Muhammad. Muhammad did not explain it. The scholars needed to scratch their head, and they started to feel the heat because of people like John of Damascus. Nuclear explosion, exactly, in, uh, Adrian Deco. You see, Adrian Deco already is seeing that this is a disaster. It's a nuclear explosion. Emotional damage. A disaster when they said that Kalimat Allah is uncreated. This incident, guys, is famous and well-documented fact which we can find in the Islamic books written by people such as Abu Zahra. As you see, some Muslims try to say that the word of Allah is created like the Mutazilite, but they kill them for it. They hunt them down and they butcher them. The Mutazilite. Look it up, guys. The Mutazilites. So these people got killed by early Muslims, and they were Muslims, right? Imagine Muslims killing Muslims just to oppose the Christian refutation of John of Damascus, who used hardcore polemics against Islam, turning the argument of Islam and the Quran and Muhammad against Muhammad and his false cult, which is Islam. Now Muslims say, now Muslims still today say that the word of Allah is uncreated, yet they put themselves in a horrible, difficult position because the word of Allah, if it is uncreated, that automatically means that Jesus is uncreated in Islam, right? Jesus is uncreated in Islam, making him equally divine with Allah, right, guys? Bam! <laughs> Emotional damage! Wow, wow, wow. Now, do you see why I love to use the teaching of John of Damascus and I always try to implement his teaching on my live streams. Do you understand why polemics is so important as the first step? And when you plant a seed with a Muslim in your debates, you are sensing, I just planted a seed and I took down that brick wall that the Muslims built around themselves. Then, and then start with step number two. Step number two is apologetics. Learn from the best. John of Damascus is for me one of the best. One of the early champions of Christianity regarding destroying Islam by using their own arguments against them. Yeah, guys, we have some wonderful news for the people who do not know. Uh, like six or seven days ago, we had a brother. Again, Ewa, Ewa, thank you for mentioning it. Brother Anouk. I had a beautiful conversation with him in my last live stream. So if you want to go watch it, beautiful long conversation. And Anouk decided to leave Islam on my live stream. And we have also two converts from Islam, uh, also on TikTok. So guys, within, within one week, within a week, we have three apostates. What about the rest of the Muslims who are watching our videos and live streams, both on TikTok, both on, uh, uh, on YouTube? What about them who do not dare to come out and say, Rob, we left Islam? Many guys, you have no idea how many people watch our videos. Our videos are reaching all the corners of the planet, guys. I receive even uh, messages from New Zealand, man. New Zealand, South Africa, all the corners of the world. And guys, I'm not here to brag. God forbid, please, Lord. But we are here to tell you how important it is for everybody to share our videos. Our videos, download them, share them all over social media. Take uh, short clips, guys. F uh, if you think, hey, this part, I really, I feel necessary to download it and uh, clip it and re-upload it on my channel, on your own channel, guys. Uh, what, that's what I'm trying to say. So that many Muslims will see and maybe they will believe that Islam is the false cult of Satan. Muhammad is a fake prophet. Right? Stop staying in the matrix. Uh, take the blue pill, bro. Take the blue pill. Stop see, staying in the matrix, in the dream world, which is nothing but a nightmare called Islam. 
right? John of Damascus. Guys, in a nutshell, it was a long nutshell, <laughs> but that's what John of Damascus started in the 8th century. He caused a huge hurricane. This John of Damascus in front of you. A huge hurricane, a tsunami, and it forced Islamic scholars, early Islamic scholars, to fight one another, to even torture one another for it. Is Kalimat Allah created? Is it uncreated? Allahu Alam, ma adri. Muhammad failed to say it. The Quran doesn't explain. Muhammad from his mouth in the hadith did not say it. So we have to fight one another about it. We have to debate one another. And we have to even torture and kill one another for it. Yeah, stop taking the blue pill, take the red pill. Stop taking the blue pill, take the red pill. All right. And here is more. Guys, this is why I call today's live stream theological disasters in the Quran, in Islam. Right? And if there's a Muslim who wants to debate, not trolls, please highlight my name and I would love to debate you. Please tell us why Islam is the truth. Why do you think in 2002 that Muhammad is a true prophet? I want to learn from you Muslims. Please. Help me to help you. I mean, we are here for the truth. Why are you calling in to act like a troll? Are you trying to show us that there are no real men left in Islam? This is why you're acting like a troll? Are you trying to tell us that Islam is left with only kids? Well, okay. Please show us the true face of Islam. Please continue doing that. Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim, guys? Is there any Muslim in the live chat? Is there any guest who wants to come up and debate me about Islam? Because I want to talk about a very famous ayah that you Muslims love to lie about. Chapter 65, Surah At-Talaq, the divorce, ayah 4. And this actually, if there's a Muslim out there in 2022 who claims to be a human being with some honor and self-respect and any dignity, if you claim to be such a person, if you are a man or if you are a you. Uh, a, a, a lady, a woman, please call me and, and, and convince me that this ayah is not from Satan, please. You claim that the Quran is from Allah and you call Allah God and you claim that you worship one God. Fine. The Satanists, guys, people who worship Satan, they also believe that Satan is one God. You're not telling us anything new. But prove that your Allah is the true God. Prove it. Because all of I, if I read the Quran and I read the Tafsir, I have to conclude that Allah is nobody else but Satan and Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. Of course Muslims worship Satan, of course. Because he claims to be the best of deceivers, exactly. Khairul Makarin, the best of deceivers. Uh, he claimed that he guides but also misguides people he he's al-fatan he creates fitna which is corruption in the land among muslims even i mean what's left what's left any muslim any muslim any muslim guys before i uh, actually let me do this before i uh, take a deep dive in this ayah that you see here on the screen let me first share something with you guys let me share something with you and this should uh, allow you to understand how Muslim brains work actually they do not work and here is why I found a beautiful book and it's quoting Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn Taymiyyah who happens to be the teacher of Ibn Kathir Ibn Taymiyyah you see, this is a painting done by Muslims. Ibn Taymiyyah, who happens to be the teacher of Ibn Kathir, right? Shaykh al-Islam. Yeah, his nickname is Shaykh al-Islam, meaning he is the Shaykh of Shiyukh. So he's a giant scholar in Islam. You know what he said? And this will, should allow you to have a, an image, a picture, a description about how Muslim brains operate or actually do not operate and here is why i found this book look there this is a literally a book on the same program that ibn footnote uses guys you know ibn footnote right this coward who would never dare to bait someone like me or christian prince 
They do not dare to debate Arabic-speaking Christians because they know what we will do to them. This kitab, guys, is called Sharh uh, Kitab Al-Ibana Min Usul Al-Diyana. Sharh Kitab Al-Ibana Min Usul Al-Diyana. That's the book title, right? If we scroll down and we go to this book, and this is Maktab al-Shamila. Remember when Ibn Footnote talked about, oh, this is uh, Maktab al-Shamila, and he's bragging about it. Well, this is the same program. <laughs> I'm using the same program that he uses. Right? Shamila. But this is the online version, basically. Maktab al-Shamila. And this book, in volume 18, Jizza 18, 18, right? Volume 18, page 18, we find a really, really beautiful quote. Look what it says here. And I'm going to give you the translation also. But I have to show the Arabic first. And here's the link for everybody if you want to have it. Especially Brother Phil Herrera. Here is the link. Brother Phil Herrera. Look what it says here. وَلِذَلِقْ قَالَ إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَةِ مَنْ تَفَلْسَفْ فَقَدْ تَمَنْطَقْ وَمَنْ تَمَنْطَقْ فَقَدْ تَزَنْدَقْ what does that mean, Rob? Please, Rob, don't butcher us. Don't torture us with the Arabic. Please tell us what it means. Well, let me hear. Let me tell you what it means. Again, the reference on top. Maybe you want to take a screenshot or and take notes, whatever you want to do. Take selfie. And that's what I've always tried to tell you for the last 15 years. Muslims are not to, allowed to use logic. They are not allowed to use logic. Meaning, they are not allowed to use their brains. Uh, the thinking is only done by imams. They are the ones who will do the thinking for you. So, in other words, Muslims are nothing but sheep that are mute, blind, and deaf. Deaf, mute, and blind. And here is why. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah said about logic and philosophy. He, and I quote Ibn Taymiyyah, guys. This is Ibn Taymiyyah talking. He who uses philosophy uses logic. And he who uses logic has become a heretic, a zandiq. In other words, in Islam, as a Muslim, you are not allowed to use your logic. And when you can't use logic and philosophy, that means you are not a breathing, living human being. You are a robot. You can only be a robot in Islam. A programmed robot, a programmed zombie. Your imams, your scholars are telling you what to do. Don't, you don't need to think. You are lobotomized. Exactly, uh, Dinacharius. Welcome. And guys, I hope you can take a screenshot. This is really important. In other words, The one who uses logic has become an, a heretic, an atheist. You're not a Muslim anymore. You're a kafir. You're a disbeliever. You're allowed to be killed. So when you use logic, you are an apostate. You become a heretic. Muslims are even allowed to kill you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Emotional, damn it. Raj, if Raj is here, I think Raj is a, a sugar-coated uh, cutie uh, pie um, Muslim here who lives here in the West. Uh, he thinks that Islam is very beautiful. Uh, brother, uh, Raj, Raj, do you accept this about yourself? That your scholars, and this is Shaykh al Islam himself, Ibn Taymiyyah, right? It's Ibn Taymiyyah who said it. I mean, this guy is not a joke in Islam, guys. Ibn Taymiyyah is the teacher of Ibn Kathir. People like uh, Ibn Footnote, Sister Farida, uh, Mimi Hijab, Ali Dawa, all of these people consider him to be a giant among giants. Uh, Raj is a child, I know, guys. This is what Ibn Taymiyyah said. The one who uses logic has become a heretic. You're not a Muslim anymore the moment you start to use your logic. It's game over. You are not a Muslim. Yeah, Raj, you know Islam better than any scholar, right? Raj, Raj yeah. guys, look at Raj's comment, guys. Raj says, scholars are fake fundament fundamentalist Muslim. Yeah, uh, brother, Raj, we should learn Islam from people like you. Yeah, yeah. We should learn Islam from people like you. Forget about Ibn Taymiyyah. Forget about Ibn Kathir. Forget about all these scholars who gave you Islam. Who gave you basically Islam. Let us learn Islam from you, Raj. 
Who did I insult, man? Okay, complete theist. You want to debate? Let me open Skype. Call me. You, I close Skype because your uh, brothers are an embarrassment for the ummah. They don't dare to debate me. They are only trolling. So let me open Skype and let's see if you dare to call in, Mr. Complete Theistic. Let, call me. I, if you want to debate, stop uh, whining. Call me. Here, my Skype is open. I'm waiting for your call. Here. Skype is open. Yalla, call me. I'm waiting for your call. Come on. Let's see if this guy claims to be a man. Let's see. Hello? <coughs> are you effing your mother? Be honest. Are you effing your mother? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Are you effing your mother? <sighs> man. Guy uh, wants to tell us how horny he is on the uh, on the phone, man. What's wrong with these people, man? Block, a block, a block. There you go. Wesley, Mr. Wesley, did your mother drop you on your head? Why are you preaching Christianity to me, man? I'm a Christian. What's wrong with you? Guys, there's a guy... Well, I think uh, he claims to be a Christian. He said he's spamming me. I mean, it's it's not enough that uh, Muslims uh, are, are are trolling. Even Christians are sending me. Look, look at the spam. Look, look, look. Christians, you are very smart. Let me block you here. Block, a block, a block, block. You are you. People like you are forcing me to do, to yeah to do this. Is there any is there any Muslim? Demonized people, man. I think he's claiming to be a Christian. I don't believe you are a Christian, though. Christians won't do that. So, complete theistic. I'm waiting for your call, man, you coward. If you are not a coward and you are more uh, man than your mother Aisha, then call me. Yalla. Rob, you're, you're scared, Rob. <laughs> you're scared, Rob. <laughs> So you're an atheist? Okay, what are you doing here? This is about Islam. Sit down, boy. Sit down, sit down. You're a waste of time, man. Sit down, here. Sit down. Go sit in the corner, man. My live stream's about Islam. Don't waste my time with your atheist. You're not better than any Muslim. Right? You atheists are not better than Muslims. Where do you think you got your morals from? From the Bible, man. Anyway. <clears throat> Do you see, guys? Any Muslim is not allowed to use his logic, according to a giant scholar like Ibn Taymiyyah. And he basically agrees with another scholar, right? Ibn Yusuf. Ibn Yusuf is here also. Not only one scholar, guys. Some Muslims will tell you, this is, this is Ibn Taymiyyah only. No, all the scholars, it's uh, anonymous that you are not allowed to use your brains, your logic. You're not to allowed to use philosophy. Because the moment you use ilm uh, al-kalam, that's what they call it, right? Ilm al-kalam, uh, the knowledge of uh, uh, of kalam, ilm al-kalam. You use logic, you use philosophy. That means you are you you're going to go out outside of Islam because Islam does not allow you to go or criticize it. You're not allowed to use logic because the Quran is illogical. Muhammad is illogical. The moment you start to use logic in Islam. You have to go against Muhammad because what kind of human being can agree with Muhammad in 2022, for example? Right? Any Muslim who is not a child? I, uh, guys, you are forcing me to conclude, to take a, a personal conclusion that there are no real men left in Islam. I, I only have kids today. Where are the Muslims to defend the ummah? This is embarrassing, man. This is truly embarrassing that there are no real men left to stand up and debate me. Guys, uh, I, I, maybe you've seen my community post. I challenged that coward, that coward who only debates atheists and he debates apostates and all kind of Christians who don't know much about Islam, but he does not dare to debate me. Uh, Daniel Pikachu. Yeah, Daniel Pikachu, you little coward. I know you're watching my videos. You're a coward. Face me. Face me in a debate, man. 
Stop running from me. Mimi Hijab, Ali Dawa, all of you are a bunch of cowards. Ibn Footnote, you're another coward. Bunch of cowards. You are not real men. You're claiming to be men, but you are not real men. You're only doing business. Because the moment you debate someone like me, I'm going to bury you and I will bury your prophet with the truth from your books. Debate me about Islam if you, have, if you claim to be a man. Three Muslims, same story. None of them dare to call me, man. Where are they? All of them watch my videos. All of them. They don't dare to come. Because there are no real men Muslim, uh, in, left in Islam. No real men. They only watch from the back of the bus. Guys, if you have noticed, uh, Sister Farida uploaded a video about the satanic verses because of my video, my live stream about the satanic verses the other day. And he thinks that he refuted me. <laughs> I will destroy all of his arguments if he dares to call me. Let's see who this is. Yes. Are you forcing me to insult your prophet? Didn't the Quran in chapter 6 tell you to not insult? Because you are forcing me to do this. Foo on your prophet. Ya Ibn al-Qahba. Foo on your prophet. That bastard that you call a prophet. You see, you're forcing me to do what I'm doing. Your prophet is a bastard. Foo on him. My shoe is on the face of your prophet, man. So at least follow the Quran and don't insult. Don't act like a dog because I'm going to treat you and your prophet like the dog that you are. Chapter 6, Ayah 108, exactly. You see, Muslims, tfu on your Allah and tfu on your prophet because you are forcing me to do that. So if you have listened to the Quran and you pretend to be Muslims, because of you insulting, you are forcing me to insult your God and your, your false prophet. Don't force me, man. Exactly. Oh, man. Emotional damage. At least follow the Quran of Allah, man. Follow the Quran of your Satan, Allah. Khairul Makreen, the best of deceivers. Al Fatan. According to the Quran, he creates fitna among Muslims, among people. One of his names is Al Fatan. He creates fitna, corruption in the land. That's your Allah. Allah even deceived Satan. Allah is the original deceiver, according to the Quran. But try to defend him at least, man. Prove me wrong. Uh, shall be because uh, Muslims can't refute me. That's the answer. They know they can't refute me, so they are only, they have only one, uh, uh, like actually two options left. Either they're going to call in and act like a bunch of idiots, they are all cuckolds, right? There are no real men left in Islam. And option two, they will try to take me down by flagging my videos, flagging my live streams. That's the only thing they are, they can do these days. Because they know everything is online. We read their books. They, they have nothing. They can't refute us. And you see here people like Alonzo Harris. You're an idiot, man. Alonzo Harris, call me and let's see. Teach me about kalam and falsafa. Go ahead. Teach me the difference about kalam and falsafa. Don't act like a kid in the live chat. Come and teach me. Teach me what ulm al kalam is. Yalla. <laughs> Rob, Rob Christian doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come teach me the science of kalam. Yalla. The knowledge, the the... the 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 ilm, the ilm. Yalla, teach me the ilm. Yalla. Let's see who is going to teach who. You coward. Rob doesn't know. No, Rob doesn't know. No, Ibn Taymiyyah knew, right? Ibn Taymiyyah knew. This is Ibn Taymiyyah talking, right? ولذلك قال ابن Taymiyyah من تفلسف فقد تمنطق. The one who uses philosophy, he became, he he basically. He is using logic. Tamantak. Waman tamantak, the one who uses logic, he has become a heretic. That's those are the words of Ibn Taymiyyah. 
You're not allowed to use logic, so don't even go there, man. How dare you to even talk about logic? At least follow the words of Ibn Taymiyyah. Hello? Suck yourself. Are you using the effort uh, towards your Allah? Uh, yeah, Adrian Deku, I got your message, my friend. I see. Yeah, uh, brother Adrian Deku again is telling us that uh, YouTube is not pushing out notifications. So, guys, I need your help to spread the word. Invite more people and see, guys, in front of you how what kind of cowards Muslims have become in 2022. We are almost reaching a new year, guys. So, summer is almost over. It's basically over. And still Muslims can defend Islam. They are all become cuckolds. They are all children, kids. They don't have what it takes. They have no backbone or spine to defend Islam. Now guys, what about this? Guys, who doesn't love children? If you love children, if you love children, how can you kill children in Islam? If you claim to be a human being, how can you kill such an innocent face? Look, guys, let's let's pretend that these are your children. Muhammad and his bunch of Sa'alik, his outlaws, we call them Sa'alik, his caravan robbers used to kill children and women. Remember the story about Umqirfa? Umqirfa, guys, that 80 year old, 80 years old woman. Muhammad ordered his men to bind both of her legs with two horses. One horse on the right, one horse on the left. And one horse went that way and the other horse went the opposite direction. And the poor lady was split in half. Killing a, an 80-year-old woman. What about children? Did Muhammad order the killing of children? Any Muslim? I challenge you to come up and say, Rob... Listen, Rob, don't lie, Rob. Our prophet never killed children. Challenge. And Phil Herrera, thank you for the link. If you guys want to save that link, bookmark that link, it's the website of Brother Phil Herrera. And he has a beautiful article about Um Qirfa, the 80-year-old woman, 80 years old woman who Muhammad literally split in half, in half. So yes, Muhammad killed women and he killed children. If Muslims want to say, Rob, you're lying? Okay, come up. De debate me about it. <sighs> Mr. Uh, you, uh, Mr. Completely Theistic, I think you are a coward. You are a Muslim in disguise. Mr. Completely Theistic, you are, not a, you, you are not an atheist. You are a Muslim. Stop pretending to be not a Muslim, you coward. You're not an atheist. At least be honest. You're not an atheist, you coward. You see, guys, even Muslims of today are too cowardice to come up and say, Rob Christian, we are Muslims. They are pretending to be not Muslims. Imagine what kind of cowards Muslims have become. They don't even dare to say we are Muslims. Imagine. You're a coward, Mr. Complete Atheist. You're a Muslim who is pretending to be an atheist. You coward. And Alonzo Harris, like always, you're not welcome to stay here. Here. Go lick the black stone, you little pagan. You are a troll. You are not welcome here. Keep creating new accounts. You're not welcome here. Mr. Complete Atheist, you're a coward. You're a, you're a Jaban. People like you are not welcome here. Here. You, you you get a block too. Yeah, yeah. If you if you were a Christian, then I am the Pope. If you used to be a Christian, then I am a Pope. Right? Just go. I have no time for trolls, man. Go, go. If you grow a backbone, if you start to grow a backbone and a spine, or a spine, then come and debate me, man. If you become an adult, then come and debate me. I have no time for kids, man. Anyway, any Muslim who would dare to debate me about the killing of children in Islam? Did Muhammad, the million dollar question is, did Muhammad, ya Muslimun, did Muhammad kill children? 
Any Muslim? Yalla ya khwan. Emotional damage. <clears throat> is there any Muslim lady who is more man than the men of today? Guys, uh, I was talking to a, uh, a sister in humanity on TikTok. She goes by the name of Precious. She calls herself Pre Precious. She is a Shia uh, sister in, uh, in humanity. She is a Shia Muslim. And she was honest to me. I spoke to her on TikTok live on air. And she agreed with me that there are truly no real men left in Islam. She is more man than any Muslim man out there because she dared to come and talk to me. And we had an awesome conversation. I did not insult her. She did not insult me. She's actually a very respectful uh, uh, Shia Muslima. But she, I believe that she is more man than any Muslim man out there. She's more man than uh, uh, Daniel Pikachu. She's more man than uh, Mimi Hijab. She's more man than Ali Dawa. She's more man than any Muslim out there who claims to be a man. And I had an awesome conversation with her. Who's RP? I don't know who RP is. I have no idea who RP is. Anyway. Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Yeah, like their prophet. And I'm going to prove it, uh, Brother Bruce Six. Welcome, Bruce. Nice to see you, my friend. Any Muslim out there? No Muslims? Okay. Now, guys, since Muslims are too scared to come and debate me about if Muhammad killed children, let me prove it anyway. All right? Let us not waste any more time. Look, Sahih Muslim. What? Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 1745b. Let me give you the link, actually. Sahih Muslim. It was narrated that that and that said that Muhammad, right? That Muhammad, look, that he said who Muhammad said. So this guy was asking the Prophet of Islam, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, we are killing children of the pagans, of the polytheists. We are killing the polyte polytheists, their children. Who are doing that? The Sahaba are killing children. During the night raids. Right? You see it? Ya Rasulullah, one of the Sahaba said, We are killing the children of the pagans. Now let's see if Muhammad said, Stop! For the hairy shin of Allah. Stop doing that. They are innocent children. Don't kill them. What did Muhammad instead say? Muhammad said, He said, Continue basically killing them because they are from them. They are pagans anyway. Abu Zubaydah. Abu Zubaydah, you have no honor, you have no dignity. You have no honor, you have no dignity. Truly, you have no honor, you have no dignity for asking me that question. Abu Zubaydah, guys, just literally said, Rob Christian, why did you rape your kids? Keep showing us the true face of, of, of your cult. You see, you Muslims have no honor. You have no dignity. You are sons of Satan for asking me such a question. What kind of man asks another man, did you rape your kids? Tfu on you and tfu on your prophet. Tfu on you and tfu on that mother who gave birth to you. And here is what you only are left with. Emotional damage. What kind of man asks another man, did you rape your kids? If you have children and your blood is from halal, you're not a son of Satan, a bastard like your prophet, you would have not asked me that question. Tfu on your prophet. I'm spitting on your prophet. Tfu, 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 three times because your prophet had suffered from OCD. Everything is three times. That's what he used to do, right? Tfu three times on the face of your prophet and your prophet is under my shoe. What are you going to do, man? Bunch of demons, man. So you see, guys, Muhammad literally ordered them to continue killing the children of the polytheists. Children, man. Imagine 
Muhammad is killing children. He and his Sahaba are killing children. Yes, continue doing that. They are from them anyway. They are children of pagans anyway. I mean, these are they are not considered to be humans. Remember what Muhammad said about pagans? Right? They are the worst of creatures according to the Quran. So, uh, guys, even children in Islam are not considered to be human beings. They are worse than apes, monkeys, uh, uh, pigs, all of uh, these animals. These children, man, innocent children, man. How is Muhammad not a son of Satan? How is he not a fake prophet? I mean, Muslims, I do not hate you, but think with me here. How can you claim that Muhammad is a prophet of God? I mean, if you claim that Muhammad is a prophet of Allah, that means Allah is Satan. Are you taking notes, Muslims? Your prophet is the prophet of Satan for, for asking his sahaba to continue killing children. This is your sahih, Muslim. I wash my hands. I'm only reading. The Muhammad was asked, Ya Rasulullah, we are killing children. Muhammad said as a response, Continue because they are from them. Look, whom min whom the Arabic says it. They are from them. The children are of the mushrikeen. Continue, Sahih Muslim. They are from them. Whom min whom? Trashy killed exactly. A savage killed that is even even children are are not safe from the hands of Muhammad. And his demonized Sahaba. How is Muhammad the prophet of God? How dare you to insult our God of the Bible. By claiming that Muhammad is one of the prophets of God of the Bible. You are blaspheming God of the Bible Muslims. If you want to continue doing that. Well it's your funeral. Man. Killing not only women. But also children. Killing Um Qirfa and others like Um Qirfa. Remember, guys, that story in the hadith of an old man who is blind. He was blind, literally. He said, I heard that uh, the, the mother of my children, she was insulting you, Ya Rasulullah. So I took a dagger and I put it in her chest. The guy, you know, he put a, a dagger in her chest and he, he basically... Uh, 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 sat on a, uh, on, on a dagger See, he lay down on top of her and he drove that dagger in her chest when he went to Muhammad and he said that he said Ya Rasulullah I just kill, killed that woman and she's the mother of my children he is, the guy is blind also Muhammad did Muhammad say what have you done no no Muhammad said you have done a good thing killing women and children in the name of Islam you don't know the meaning of a pagan, someone who worships idols, tamathil, idols. Your prophet was a mushrik, he worshipped idols. That is, that's what a pagan means. Someone who worships idols, someone who worships many gods, that's what a pagan is. And your prophet was a pagan, son of a pagan. His parents were both pagans, Amina was a pagan, uh, supposedly the father of Muhammad between brackets. Abdullah was a pagan. His grandfather was a pagan. And all of them died like pagans. Only a couple of uncles, like Al-Abbas and others like him. They accept a handful of Muslims, guys. Uh, a handful of uh, family of Muhammad became Muslim, like Ali. Uh, or you, you really could count them. Only a small number in Mecca accepted Muhammad. Islam was not accepted because of uh, the Meccans uh, believed it was the truth. No, Muhammad, when he became powerful and he went back with an army of 10,000 and he broke the, uh, the treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah. Remember Muhammad, guys, if you know about Islam, the beginning of Islam, Muhammad created a peace, supposed peace treaty that should have lasted 10 years, right? That's the treaty, treaty of Hudaybiyah. A very famous incident in the life of Muhammad. Hudaybiyah. Muhammad broke that uh, treaty, guys. Within two years, and he attacked the Meccans in Mecca 
with an army of 10,000. They never saw him coming, right? And they basically surrendered. And then he took a stick and he destroyed all the idols, supposedly. And he kept only Allah <laughs> and the black stone as idols. So he kept Allah that already existed before Islam, right? He kept Allah and he kept the black stones. I already destroyed Abbas many times over Mulhad al-Islam. I even made him say that all the Quran versions like uh, Khalaf, uh, Al-Kisai, uh, Qalun, all of them, Warsh, all of them are false Qurans. He only accepts the Hafs Quran. He believes Abbas, yeah, Abbas is a Mutazalite also, yeah. Abbas and uh, uh, the other uh, uh, clown of uh, Speaker's Corner, uh, Yahya, remember Yahya guys? Both of them, I made them say, and it's on my YouTube channel, guys. I made them say that only the Hafs Quran is the true Quran. Imagine. What kind of prophet orders the killing of children? Did Allah send him divine revelation to do that? Muslims? Kill the children. It's okay, Muhammad said. It's okay. Pot pot gaming. I have no idea what you're talking about. What hadith? What hadith? What hadith are you talking about, Mr. Pot pot? RC, can you confirm this hadith? I have no idea what you're talking about. What is the hadith about? You think I, I know what every hadith, if you give me a number or a reference, do you think I know what the hadith says? Umdat al Ahkam, volume 3, hadith number 460. You think I know uh, from my mind what, what the hadith says? I have no idea what that hadith is, says. I have no idea what the context behind that hadith is. At least tell me what it's all about. I have no idea. No idea. You ha do you have any idea how many hadiths there are in Islam? <laughs> how many books there are in Islam? Anyway. <sighs> now guys, regarding muta, I've talked about muta many times over. Prostitution in Islam. Prostitution in Islam. Uh, Jamal Tota, exactly. All of these, all of these guys who claim to be Muslim apologists, they are all clowns. All of them, they do not dare to debate an Arabic speaker like me. Hello, TM Crosspost. Nice to see you, my friend. EMB Maxim also in the house. Nice to see you guys. God bless you. Both of you. We've talked about muta in the past many times. But I finally, after doing some investigation and research, I finally found out why Omar abrogated muta. I finally found a reason why Omar abrogated muta. It was not Muhammad. It was not Abu Bakr. It was Omar as the second caliph, and I want you to take notes. It was Omar who abrogated the muta'a in the Quran, chapter 4, ayah 24. The prostitution ayah of the pimp Allah himself, who used to order uh, 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 the Sahaba to sleep with Muslim men and treat them like prostitutes. I finally, guys, I finally found the reason why Omar abrogated muta'a. But before I uh, show you the reason, guys, let me first prove from the Islamic books that it was Omar who abrogated Muta'a. Watch. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1405C. And here is the link. Maybe you want to bookmark it and say, guys, please focus. No side talks, please. Please focus. Yeah, and Phil Herrera, exactly. He just gave us the link. Even sister, the sister of Aisha became a muta'a whore, literally. She slept with a Zubair, and the product of muta'a, the son of muta'a, became, 
became Abdullah bin Zubair. So the sister of Aisha did muta. She became the whore of the village. She was one of the first ladies who practiced muta prostitution. And her name is Asma bint, the daughter of Abu Bakr. The sister of Aisha was one of the first ladies who practiced muta. Regarding muta, read with me, guys. Are you ready, guys? Give me one, please, so that I know everybody is listening. Please focus, guys. Don't allow anyone to distract you. This is very important. And I hope you can take notes and debate Muslims about it. I gave you the link, hadith number 1405C from Sahih Muslim. Atiyah reported that Jabir bin Abdullah came to perform Umrah. And we came to this abode and the people asked him about different things. And then they made a mention of temporary marriage. Whenever you say, see guys, temporary marriage, that's muta. Right? That's the muta right there. Prostitution, in other words. The Islamic prostitution. Right? Muta. Temporary marriage in Islam is prostitution. It's muta that Allah made halal in chapter 4, ayah 24. And I challenge any Muslim to give me the ayah that abrogated muta in the Quran. Challenge. I challenge the biggest imam with the big beard or the small imam with the small beard. Show me the ayah that abrogates muta. Show me the ayah in the Quran that abrogated muta. Challenge. I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the ayah that abrogated muta. Challenge. Some people don't believe that such an ayah exists. Yeah, you're correct because that's why I'm challenging them. So let's see who abrogated muta. Read with me, guys. Continue reading, guys. Read with me. So muta, the topic is muta. Whereupon he said, yes, we have been practicing, we have been benefiting ourselves. Look, guys, at these trashy, filthy demons using their own sisters and mothers and aunts as whores, treating them as whores like Muhammad used to do it. Yes, we have been practicing and benefiting ourselves by muta, by practicing muta, prostitution, during the lifetime of the prophet Muhammad, the evil fake prophet, peace be upon him, peace be upon him, and during the time of Abu Bakr and Omar. Uh -huh. Emotional damage. So what's going on, guys? Muhammad dies. Still people practicing muta when Abu Bakr becomes the first caliph. And also in the time of Omar, when he becomes the second caliph of the ummah, of the Islamic nation. Benefiting, look, benefiting themselves. Yeah, muta is good, guys. Prostitution is good in Islam. Prostitution is good in Islam. It's halal. It's good. It's something good from Allah. And even Ali, guys, in the tafsir, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of Muhammad, says that muta'a, prostitution, is a mercy from Allah. Allah gave a mercy, guys, and it, in the shape of prostitution, according to Ali. Prostitution is the mercy from Allah, guys. It's a mercy from Allah. It's a gift from Allah. Ya, ya, akhwan. Like, ya akhwan, like, ya, la, ya akhwan, it's mercy from Allah, according to Ali and others like Ali. Emotional damage. Sleeping with their own mothers and sisters and daughters, treating them like a bunch of wars. You see, guys, the early Sahaba, uh, the, the early Salaf, the, the best of generations, and Muhammad called the best, best generations are the three uh, first generations of Islam are the best generation. Right? The Salaf, we call them the Salaf, the Salaf of Salihin, they used to treat women in Islam, their own mothers and sisters, like a bunch of whores. Halan fun muta, exactly. They had no honor, they had no dignity. No honor and no dignity. Why? Because exactly, Islam is nothing but a satanic cult. Allah is Satan. 
Um, yeah, there's a chance, Mr. 13 above. That's a, actually a very good comment from you. Is it possible that some hadith or actually Quran ayahs that have been removed and made hadith? Yeah, there is a chance. Because how? How did Omar abrogate Mut'ah? Look, it's Omar who abrogated because he was the final caliph, the second caliph who allowed Mut'ah to be practiced. And guys, here is another hadith. Watch. Watch. Sahih Muslim 1405D this time. Let me give you the link. Guys, save all these links. These are very important links because Sunni claim that uh, uh, Mut'ah was abrogated by uh, Muhammad. They claim that uh, Mut'ah was abrogated by Muhammad. Yet what we find in Sahih Muslim contradicts that claim. We have a huge contradiction and it's in front of you. Read with me. This is the second hadith that destroyed that claim. Else we have a huge contradiction. Look, Jabir bin Abdullah reported, we contracted temporary marriage giving a handful of tails or flower as dower during the lifetime of Muhammad. Guys, what is being said here? What is being said here, guys? The Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad, used to give women some flour, some dough, uh, 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 as uh, money, in the shape of basically money, <laughs> uh, for the women, giving them flour, uh, dough, uh, 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 as dower, right, as money, for sex for a couple of days or hours. For a couple of days or hours, right? Imagine, I, I'm going to give you some flour so that you can make bread out of it, but allow me to sleep with you and treat you like a whore for, let's say, uh, one day. Do you agree with it? Yes. Uh, clap, clap. G uh, okay, we agree. Okay, uh, uh, Ayusha, I'm going to sleep with you. Are you agreeing with it? Yes, come and, and use me. Use my body. Use my vagina. And if you are, uh, you have pleasure, you had an orgasm, uh, give me the flower and uh, you go your way, I will go my way. Sex trading, exactly. Maybe some eggs. Maybe uh, five cents. I mean, what's, I mean, this is Islam? This is from God? Muslims, really? Allah allowing prostitution, muta, and making it halal? You see, guys, Omar thought, and I understand why Omar had to abrogate it, because Muhammad was a filthy son of Satan. Abu Bakr was one filthy son of Satan. And even his daughter, Asma, practiced muta ah with the Zubair. And out of that muta ah prostitution, the son of muta, ah <laughs> literally, guys, the son of muta, ah one of the first son of muta ah's, son of muta ah was who? Abdullah, the son, the son of Az Zubair, right? A product of Muta, literally. Now, do you understand why we call Muslims sons of Muta? Your grand, grand, granddaddies were all product of Sud of Muta. They were all bunch of sons of Muta. Hello, it's not an insult. That's what your books are saying. Ibn Abbas called Abdullah bin Zubair a son of Muta. Imagine, you're a son of Muta. Go ask your mother, go ask your mother, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, what she did with your father. He literally said it. <laughs> In Arabic, we say, Ya Ibn al-Muta, <laughs> you son of Muta. So guys, Abu Bakr allowed Muta until Muhammad allowed it. Muhammad did it. Abu Bakr did it. His daughter did it. <laughs> As Zubair did it. Uh, Ibn Abbas loved Muta and he practiced Muta. Yet Omar, when he came in power as the second caliph, he abrogated it. He forbid it. You see it? Uh oh. Uh oh. Emotional damage. So the million dollar question is, if Omar can abrogate the muta of Allah in chapter 4 of the Quran, ayah 24, 
فما استمتم استمتعتم به منهن فأوتهن أجورهن فريدة what you have enjoyed of the vaginas of the Muslim women به the vaginas of the Muslim ladies and you want to give them uh, when you when you climax and give them their wages their money Allah said he allowed it he made it halal then Omar thinks that Allah is filthy Omar became a kafir literally he became a zandiq for abrogating it since when is Omar a prophet after Muhammad million dollar question is who gave Omar the authority to make mut'a haram who allowed question who allowed Omar to forbid the mut'a of Allah we need to ask the question to the Muslims who allowed Omar to forbid the mut'a of Allah did Allah send divine revelation after the death of Muhammad to Omar to abrogate his mut'a because remember Muta is from Allah. Muta is 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 of Allah, right? Muslims, Sunni Muslims, want to convince us that Muhammad abrogated Muta. No, it's Omar in his time when he became a caliph, much later after the death of Muhammad. Muslims, stop lying to us, you bunch of hypocrites. Else, burn Sahih Muslim. I challenge you to burn Sahih Muslim. And the rest of the tafsir books are telling us that it was Omar who abrogated it after the death of Muhammad. So the Shia guys, Shia till today practice muta, right? Shia till today treat their own mo uh, mothers and sisters, their own Muslim women as whores. It's halal. They say it's halal from Allah. We don't accept Omar. We curse Omar. We curse Abu Bakr. We curse Aisha. We don't accept their, uh, uh, their, their, uh, uh, basically their choices. We don't agree with them. Now, do you understand why Shia till today treat uh, guys? Sorry for the typo. Shia till today treat their own, not owned, their own Muslim women as whores. Let me remove uh, my comment. Okay. Typo. Sorry for the typo, guys. But you get the idea. Now, do you understand why Shia till today practice muta'a prostitution of Allah? That's why. And guys, I want to thank everybody for this awesome number of crowds. Uh, we have 270 people watching. Wow, guys. Glory to Christ. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for being here, guys. We are doing a lot of damage and Muslims are only listening in the from the back of the bus. My Skype is open and not one Muslim dares to call me. Oh, Not one Muslim dares to call me. Look. Skype is open. Yalla ya muslimun, call me. Here, Skype is open. Call me, man. Refute me. Am I lying? I challenge you to say, Rob Christian, you're lying. Challenge. Now, do you understand why I say there are no real men left in Islam? They are only watching and they are fully emotional damage. Emotionally damaged, guys. Uh, thank you, Jamal. Yes, that's why we are doing this. We are here for the truth and are we showing you that Allah is nobody else but Satan who allowed prostitution. Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. Abu Bakr is a demon, right? Uh, Omar used to, was a demon, but he thought, hey, our nation is, is, is dying. Now, guys, Omar sensed this cannot continue. Uh, we, I know that Allah is Satan, I know that Allah is evil, but I have to do something about this. Our Islamic nation is, is becoming uh, all sons of muta. Muta is being practiced by all the Sahaba. We have to do something about it. This cannot continue. Allah is a filthy son of Satan. I mean, Allah is Satan. And we all became products of muta. I have to uh, override Allah. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to say. I, Omar, I have to override Allah. I'm better than Allah. Literally, guys, we have to conclude that Omar was better than his Allah and Prophet. Right? Omar was better than Allah and his fake Prophet Muhammad. Omar is better than Allah, yes. 
And he's better than Muhammad because Muhammad loved muta'a. He loved prostitution. Now, guys, I want you now to take notes and maybe you can take a screenshot. Look, I took a screenshot from that hadith, the earlier hadith, right, guys? Here, same hadith. Screenshot, and I put this. Notice, notice, when Omar forbid it, mut'a was still halal for four years in the time of Omar. Guys, Omar, Omar, take a screenshot. Sorry, let me remove the comment. Notice, Omar was four years in power. He already became a, a caliph. And for four long years under his rule, mut'a is still halal. After four years, Omar makes it haram. Did you catch it? This is very important. Omar didn't forbid mut'a. What I'm trying to say is, Omar did not immediately forbid mut'a prostitution when he became a caliph of the ummah. Right? That is what I'm trying to tell you. He abrogated muta of Allah after four years. After four long years. Damaging. Damaging. Damage. So he waited four years. What, what, why, why was Omar waiting? Why was Omar waiting all that time? Was he scared to be killed? Was he uh, scared to abrogate the muta of Allah? Hmm. Uh, maybe that would, was the case. He he needed to wait a little bit uh, to gather more power. Guys, my throat is now really starting to killing me. Pray for my throat and health, guys. I'm still under the weather. Let me drink some water, guys. I need to... Uh, guys... Two minute breaks. Please don't go anywhere. I'm not finished. Don't go anywhere. Small drinking break. I need to go and take my medicine for my throat. Be right back. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. <clears throat> Coffee break. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon. And support We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. Oh, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You know it's free, Habibis. Don't be tight like Muhammad. Commercial break! Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support. www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian. We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. Oh, and also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You know, it's free, habibis. Don't be tight like Muhammad. Commercial break! Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support. WW. Alright, guys. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> oh, man. This is uh, one of the risks, guys. <clears throat> Of talking for a long time when you're still not recovered, eventually your throat will start to itch. And so now and then I really need to take a small break, guys. Please forgive me. Uh, yeah. Pray for my health, guys. I really uh, need your prayers so that we can uh, <clears throat> be hundred percent again, because we have a lot of lot of work to do together. All right, <clears throat> see guys, I go and take a small break and people are leaving. We, you know, at least 12 people left, at least. People have no patience, man. <laughs> people have no patience, man. 
Yeah, drink some Zamzam water, RC. You'll feel much better. <laughs> yeah, as if there is something called real Zamzam water. Guys, a lot of people, especially Muslims who believe in that nonsense, Muslims are getting scammed online, for example, uh, when they sell these bottles. They, they put a label on it. It says real Zamzam water. It's actually uh, normal water. <laughs> And they sell it for uh, a lot of money. There's nothing called Zamzam water, man. Anyway. Now, guys, since we showed you that it was Omar who abrogated Muta'a, focus, guys, please. Notice, like I said, notice, Muta'a prostitution was halal for the, four, for the first four years in the time of Omar. After four years, Omar, I think I have to conclude that Omar became powerful enough to abrogate the muta because he was seeing, he was being a witness, an eyewitness that the ummah was destroying itself with muta. All of these children, all of these offsprings were a bunch of uh, sons of muta. Omar thought, hey, this cannot go, uh, uh, this cannot continue like this. I have to abrogate the muta of Allah and Muhammad. So basically, Omar became b much better than Allah. Omar has much more morality than Allah because Allah allowed muta. It's a divine, it's a divine gift. It's the mercy of Allah. Muta is the mercy of Allah, ya akhwan. <laughs> so guys, I found finally, I was looking for it for a long time. I've always asked myself, what could be the reason? What is the reason behind the choice of Omar to finally forbid Allah's muta in chapter 4, ayah 24? Why? Why he had to do it? I had already basically told you to reason, but well, let's see what the Islamic, Islamic books are saying. What did, the, what did the Islamic books say? What was one of his reasons? Does anyone know the reason? Have you, uh, Phil Herrera? I know you have gotten a lot of information uh, in the past. Uh, Phil, Herrera, Phil Herrera, are you there, Phil Herrera? Or others like Phil Herrera? Do you know why Omar bin al Khattab forbid the practice of muta prostitution? Player Faint says, uh, Omar was impotent? No. <laughs> Phil Herrera, you don't know Phil Herrera? Come on, I thought you know, man. Phil, do you know? If you know, just uh, give us the spoiler, no problem. I'm not going to crucify you for it. <laughs> don't worry, brother, don't worry. Dragon Daenerys, welcome, sister. Nice to see you, sister Ewa, Ewa, all of you. Dear sisters in the Lord, nice to see you. Brothers, sisters. Yes, families were destroyed. We already mentioned that. Muta will destroy the community. But why? What was his reason? Let's see what, which, who this is. Hello? Donkey, this is family. Donkey, son of a donkey. Yahmar ibn Ahmar. Keep showing us the true face of Islam. Keep doing that. Yeah, families were destroyed. We know that. We have to take that conclusion. I mean, uh, if if everybody is doing muta, eventually, I mean, that's not healthy, man. You are treating your old women as whores. What will be uh, what will become of that community eventually, right? Oh, I mean, I mean, come on, man, it's filth, right? But what was the reason? What was that main reason of Omar for him to think? Hey, enough is enough. I have to forbid muta of Allah. I have to abrogate the Quran. Anyone, any, anyone has seen it in the books? Uh, Mr. Chu, I've, I have permanently banned him, but he keeps continuing creating new accounts. And every time he creates a new account, I ban him. This guy has more names than Allah. He has more accounts than Allah himself. Do you understand what I'm... Uh, 
Do you, don't you think that I'm banning these people? Of course I'm, do, I'm doing that. But they have more accounts than Allah. Every minute he creates a new account. Well, I'm, what am I going to do about it? I can only continue blocking the new account. And he's showing us that Muslims are too embarrassed these days. No, uh, it's not Ibn Zubair, no. You're very close though, Mr. Denetrius. Uh, I love your name, by the way. Hello, brother OT Genesis. God bless you. His daughter... Uh, no. Actually, 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 yes. <laughs> I didn't want to, man, I, I wish that nobody had the answer, man. <laughs> I did, I really wish that nobody had the answer, but you are right, brother. The daughter of Omar became a whore. <laughs> the daughter, let me type it out, the daughter, you got it, brother. The daughter the daughter of Omar became a whore who practiced muta, like the daughter of Abu Bakr. Imagine, guys, the first two, the first two caliphs, Abu Bakr, the first one, and the second one, Omar, both of their daughters became whores who practiced prostitution. Uh -huh. Now, imagine, guys, imagine you are a father and you love your daughter and you found out that your own daughter in secret is practicing prostitution. She became a whore and she even used to get money out of it. Mashallah, exactly. She loved Muta. But Omar was like, man, even my own daughter. Even my own daughter. And guys, imagine the, imagine the emotional damage of Omar. Emotional damage. Now guys, what I want to tell you, before I show you the book, Sunni, Sunni Muslims who love Omar, Sunni Muslims who love Omar, they try to hide this. So I had to go to the Shia books. Listen carefully. I had to go to the Shia books to find this out for myself. Here is a Shia book. Bihar al-Anwar. Very, very famous book. Very respected book in, Shi in the Shia world. Called Bihar al Anwar by Al Majlisi, volume 100. Look how many volumes this book had. Volume 100. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Imagine if you have to buy all these books, you will go bankrupt. Volume 100 on pages 303 and 304, we find the reason of Omar. Shia did not hide it because they hate Omar, but the Sunnis are so embarrassed. They literally hid this information from us. They hid the information from the Sunni Muslims. Yeah, more books. This volume, guys, this book has more books than maybe than you have, than you can own. So on volume 100 of this book series, multi-volume book, on page 303 and 304, we find the reason of Omar, why he chose to forbid Mut'a when he became... The Amir al muminin the Caliph of the Ummah, the Prince of the Ummah, he himself, Omar. He found out that his daughter became a whore. Watch. Bihar al-Anwar, volume 100, page 303 to page 304. He, Imam al-Siddiq, says, guys, focus, please, focus. Damaging, damaging. So the remaining Muslims performed the muta during the lifetime of the Prophet in Hajj. So in Hajj also, both the pilgrims and others practice muta in the time of Muhammad during Hajj. And during Abu Bakr's time, they practice muta. And four years during the Omar's time. So guys, if you are seeing what I'm seeing, even during the time of Omar being a caliph, muta was practiced by the Sahaba, right? And their children, all right? Everybody was practicing muta. But after four years, Omar thought, enough is enough. I have to do something about it. I have to abrogate this. Guys, this is very important, right? This is very important. This is crucial information about Muta. So let's see what happened next. Until Omar entered upon... Oh, it's a sister. Sorry, guys. Not his daughter. Sister. I even forgot it. So he found out that his sister, not daughter. So you're not correct, uh, uh, brother. OT Genesis, one of the admins. It, he found out that it was his sister, not his daughter. Guys, 
Glory to God, uh, we are correcting ourselves. I forgot, I thought that it was his daughter, it was his sister. Okay. You confused me for a second, brother. <laughs> I got confused because of your uh, answer. It was his sister, Afra. So guys, not the daughter. Please forgive me for that mistake. It was not his daughter. It was the sister of Omar who became a whore. Right? She is the one who practiced muta. And we even know her name. Her name is Afra. So when Omar entered upon Afra, finding out that his sister practicing muta, whereupon he saw a product of muta, a son of muta, a child of muta, her own child that he saw in her lap. And he thought, hey, I never gave you uh, for marriage. <laughs> so in secret, guys, he finds out that his sister was practicing muta behind his back and she was even breastfeeding that child the son or the daughter of Muta. So guys, the sister of Omar herself, Afra, practiced Muta, like the daughter of Abu Bakr, Asma bint Abu Bakr. And she, he saw her breastfeeding the child. So he looked at the milk on the child's mouth and he became angry. He trembled with fear and he was really agitated. Who? Omar. And then look what he, do, he does, guys. He takes the child out of her hands and he went out until he reached the mosque and went on the mimbar. Guys, the mimbar is what, what Muslim imams, let's say, or scholars climb to give a khutbah, a speech, right? Let's say on Friday, uh, during Fridays, right? So he climbed on the mimbar and he started to talk to the crowd. He said, call the men to the congregation prayer and uh, it was not it was not the time of prayer omar was he, did, he didn't call the men to pray no he called them for a personal manner as you see that's when the people found out they knew that it was a personal matter of omar so the people came and uh, and and omar said to the people o people of the hijra meaning the people who migrated from Mecca to Medina with Muhammad. And he addressed also the Ansar, the helpers of Medina. They, call, they are called Ansar, the helpers. And the descendants of Qathan. <laughs> okay. Which one of you want to love to see one of the women who are forbidden to him? I.e. his sister, mother, etc. Well, she has a child like this. And he's showing the child, right? The product of Muta, the son of Muta or the daughter of Muta of his own sister. Afra. So he's, he say, look at this child. This child is a product of a whore. My own sister was a whore. And this, is, this child of her, this child is a son or daughter of Muta. Take beer. Take beer. Emotional damage. So look, my sister is a whore, Omar basically says. Look at this child. This is a child of a whore, he said basically. And he's pointing fingers. Example, this child. You see this child? Who she, my sister, gave birth to and is suckled on her breast, on her, literally, on her tatas. And she is unmarried. Is it? She became a whore. They said, the people said yes. So, you know, they are scared of, of Omar. Omar is very angry, guys. Imagine this in front of you. Omar is on the mimbar. He, gl he climbed the mimbar. And he's giving a speech and everybody's listening. And they are scared of Omar. I mean, Omar is the caliph. He is the ruler of the ummah, the entire Islamic nation. He's the second caliph. So the people said, yes, 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 Omar, we agree with you. He said, I went and entered upon her, his sister Afra, on this hour. And I found this child on her lap. So he's describing to the people who are listening what happened, what he found. He found out that his sister practiced muta. And made her swear, how did you get this child? Yeah, oh, my sister. And she said, I did muta. I did muta. Imagine the emotional damage. Imagine the emotional damage of Omar finding out that his sister did muta. Emotional damage. 
So know, O people, Omar continues, he's talking still to the people. So know, O people, O, uh, o Muslim nation, that this mut'a was halal for Muslims during the lifetime of Rasulullah. But now I, Omar, now, and here is the damaging part in the end. Even Omar confirms that he is the one who abrogated, forbid the mut'a of Allah from the Quran in Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 24. But now I, Omar, declare it haram. So who is the one again over and over and over again? Who is the one who abrogated muta from the Sunni books? We showed you Sahih Muslim. And now we are showing you from Bihar al-Anwar that it was Omar who abrogated muta, And we now know the reason, right? We now finally found out why Omar abrogated muta Because he found out that his sister, his own sister, Afra, was sleeping with another man, she became a whore, she practiced muta, Like the daughter of Abu Bakr, Asma. She was begging a guy for money. Yes, she became a whore. Uh -huh. So Omar has had his own personal reasons for it. It was a family... <laughs> it was a family... <laughs> Issue. <laughs> it was a family issue. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh man. This is bad. This is damaging, man. This is damaging, man. The daughters of the early Muslims, the daughters of the Sahaba, the sisters of the Sahaba, all became whores. Guys, the women were treated like whores. And they were enjoying it. They were enjoying it. Emotional damage. They were enjoying it. Yeah. And this is again the reference, guys. On top. Maybe you want to take a screenshot. Bihar al-Anwar, volume 100, pages 303 to page 304. 303 and 304. And here is again the cover of the book. So you will have the entire information. Right? Bihar al-Anwar by al-Majlisi. And guys, again, this is a Shia book because Sunnis tried to hide this information and I had to go to the Shia, to a Shia library to find this damaging reason. Why or oh why did Omar abrogate Muta? Why? Why oh, after four years? Guys, as long as it was not his sister or his, maybe his daughter who is practicing muta, Omar thought, hey, uh, there's no problem. I know the community is being destroyed. But after four years, after four years when he's in power, Omar, for family issues, <laughs> finding out that his own sister became a whore, he had to forbid it. He thought, hey, man, even my own sister became a whore. Even my own sister, Afra. But wait. 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 <laughs> Did Allah make Omar a final prophet? Did Omar became the prophet, the seal of all the prophets after Muhammad? Hmm. 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 Wow. Even someone like Omar can abrogate Quran. Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 24. I hope, guys, you are enjoying this barbecue. I am destroying the Sunnis left and right. Shia love muta. They love muta, but now I destroy the Sunnis. And we know now why Omar abrogated muta. Now, guys, other topic. Forget about Muta. <laughs> we talked about Muta. Forget about it. Guys, question. Did you know? Did you know that in Islam, when you go to the brothel of Allah, the pimp, who even allowed Muslim women to become whores and practice prostitution in the form of Muta, did you know, according to Allah and his prophet, 
Because remember, whenever Muhammad speaks, it's divine revelation from Allah, right? وَمَا يَنْتُقْرَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَىٰ وَحْيٍ يُوحَىٰ Chapter 53, ayahs 3 and 4. Everything that comes out of the mouth of Muhammad is divine revelation. So Muhammad is the walking, talking divine revelation from Allah, right? So let's see what Muhammad said. In Jam'a Tirmidhi, hadith number 2563, if you are a Muslim man and you go to Allah's Jannah, the Islamic Las Vegas of Allah, as a man, as you see here, as a man, and this is Muhammad saying it, not Rob Christian, this is Muhammad saying it, the Muslim man, the believer, when he desires a child in paradise, he shall be carried in pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> a Muslim man can be pregnant in the Jannah of Allah, and the child will be born, and uh, the complete the aging, in an hour as he desires. So guys, you're uh, you're going to you are you you can be pregnant in Islam, in the Jannah of Allah as a Muslim man. Not women can won't be pregnant, guys. Yes, they are going to do a lot of dahman dahman. Remember, a lot of hard sex, a lot of action in the Jannah of Allah, and Allah will be watching. And Ali Dawa is proud of that. Ali Dawa is proud of that. Ali Dawa, when he goes to the brothel of Allah, when he dies and he goes to the brothel of Allah on Judgment Day, Allah can uh, allows uh, people like Ali Dawa to become pregnant. Not the ladies, but the men. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Astaghfirullah. Muslim men can be pregnant? Yeah, only in Islam, guys. I mean, maybe they will have grow a womb. I don't know. A uterus. I don't know. <laughs> Madri. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Men can be pregnant. Now, some Muslims... So, you know, no, uh, this is about women. No, you liars. Look, we go to the Arabic. It's talking about the believing men. Al-Mu'min. Not Al-Mu'mina. Al-Mu'min. The believer in Arabic, guys, this is for a male. So the males will be pregnant. If you desire that, of course. If you want to have a child, that child will be born and will become 33 years old within an hour. Right? The child that you are going to carry in your womb, in your belly as a man, will be born... And will become 33 years old in one hour. I mean, miracle from Allah, brothers and sisters. <laughs> in one hour. I mean, I mean, what the heck? In one hour? Yeah, the whole process is one hour? <laughs> if as he, look guys, as he desires. So it's talking about the man. Al-Mu'min. Not talking about a woman. In Islam, guys, Muslim women, they were they are going to be used, but they are not going to become pregnant if they desire it. No, the males will become pregnant. Okay. Well, it, Muslims, be happy. This is Jama'at Tirmidhi. I have nothing to do with this. And of course, it's a Hassan hadith, right? Look, Hassan. It's not Daif. <laughs> It's not Daif, it's Hassan. Jam'a Tirmidhi, hadith number 2563. And here's the link. Hassan. 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 Thank you very much. Now guys, let us bring down the hammer on the face of Muhammad this time. Guys. Any Muslim? <laughs> Any Muslim? <laughs> this is Muhammad. Jujur. This is Muhammad, my friend. If I can prove that this is Muhammad, that, does that mean it's game over for, for Muslims? Is it game over for Islam? I don't know. Madri. A'udhu <laughs> billah. Astaghfirullah. This cannot be the prophet of Islam, brothers and sisters. Well, 
what if I can show you directly from the Islamic books that this was Muhammad? Muhammad used to walk around looking like this. Remember, Muhammad used to use kuhl, mascara, the Islamic mascara. Not only that, he used to dress like an effeminate man. Muhammad was a cross-dresser. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Allah alayk ya, ya Rob Christian. May Allah curse you, Rob Christian. <laughs> Muslims are now really, you know, when they, they are, I know they are watching, but in the background they are cursing me left and right. Rob, how can you say this about our prophet? LGBTQ plus prophet? <laughs> the cross-dressing prophet? Yes. Muslims are really proud about their cross-dressing prophet. I kid you not. Else why are they not calling me to refute me? Muslims, are you agreeing with me? Be honest. Are you agreeing with me because you know that I can prove it from your books? Be honest, man. Be honest, man. Okay. So guys, before I prove it, let me show you that Muhammad destroyed himself and he cursed himself. Sunan Abi Dawood, hadith number 4098, great Sahih, Sahih, brothers and sisters, not Daif, narrated Abu Huraira, the messenger of Allah, cursed the man who dressed like a woman and the woman who dressed like a man. So, in other words, as you heard earlier, since we understood from the Quran that Muhammad is the walking, talking, divine revelation of Allah. According to chapter 53 of the Quran, ayahs 3 and 4. Quran! That means Allah and Muhammad cursed Muhammad if we can prove that Muhammad looked like this. Meaning, Muhammad will burn, baby burn. Right? If we can prove that Muhammad used to look like this from the Islamic books. Burn, baby, burn. Barbecue for Muhammad for eternity. Burn, baby, burn. Because Muhammad and Allah cursed Muhammad, right? According to the words of Muhammad. If you dress like a woman as a man, you are cursed. Because Muhammad curses, meaning Allah curses. Thank you very much. And here is the proof. Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 2581. Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 2581. Take notes. And uh, brother Phil Herrera, can you provide the link please? Thank you. Muhammad said, Al-Wahi lam ya'tini. Muhammad said, Al-Wahi lam ya'tini. Wa ana fi thawbim ra'atin illa Aisha. Muhammad said, Divine revelation from Allah does not come to me in the garment, in the piece of clothing. Of any woman except that of Aisha. Emotional, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 drinking water like crazy, just as I know. Uh, Muslims, do you see how your prophet cursed himself to hellfire? Uh Tom to my this is not Quran, this is a hadith, right? This is hadith, this is Sahih al Bukhari, this is not Quran. Tafsir is for the Quran, right? Tom, too, what do you think about the fact that your prophet was a cross dresser? Be honest. This is Sahih al Bukhari, man. Muhammad literally looked like this. Wearing the clothes of Aisha. Yet he forgot that he used to curse men and women who dressed like the opposite sex. I mean, look, I mean, look, I mean, the prophet is sexy and you know it. Tut, 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 tut. Muhammad is sexy and you know it. Guys, do you understand why Muslims always say Muhammad was beautiful? This is why they always call him beautiful. Because Muhammad looked like a woman. With kuhul. Kuhul means literally makeup, mascara. Right? 
and look beautiful garment of Ayusha, his own baby bride, right? Muhammad cursing himself, forgetting what he said earlier, <laughs> yet he is always found in the garment of Ayusha, of Aisha. The drag queen Muhammad. I mean, Muhammad would have played in that drag race TV show. What was it called? Ru, Ru, Ru. I have to look it up, man. Ru, something like Ru. Ru, drag race. Ru. RuPaul? Yeah, RuPaul. Okay. Muhammad would have won the, the drag race, man. That TV show that they are spamming us with. Filthy show, I know, guys. But yeah, Muhammad would have won it. Look, man. Muhammad uh, is cross-dresser. Yeah, Muslim woman. Boy George has nothing on Mo. Exactly, Cherokee gy Gypsy. Nice to see you. Long time, sister. Are you okay? Long time. I didn't see you for a long time. I hope you're okay, sister. God bless you. And the rest of our beautiful admins. Honor to work with you guys. Dragon Daenerys or Adrian Deku, I hope one of you can uh, take care of the timestamps, if you don't mind. Uh, Phil Herrera uh, and others will take care of the references after the live stream. Nice to see you guys. It's a, it's a blessing to have you on board again, Edwins. Keep my Edwins in your prayers, guys. Uh, the people in the blue. Keep us in your prayers. Pray for my health. I'm still under the weather. Yeah, my throat is still itching. I'm slowly recovering, though. I, uh, a week ago, it was really bad. I mean, I still don't understand how I did that live stream, guys. I was really sick, man. I had a huge headache. But glory to Christ, we finished the live stream. The uh, last live stream, couple, uh, six or seven days ago. I can't remember how many days that was. A week? A week ago? Yeah. So, Muslims, you have to accept that Muhammad was a cross-dresser. This is Sahel Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Muhammad used to receive divine revelation. And uh, what is the context be behind this hadith? Rob? Well, the hadith is very long. But basically, if you go to the hadith and you read the entire hadith, the wives of Muhammad used to complain. Ya Rasulullah, O husband, brother, you are not treating us equally with Aisha. Aisha is getting all the gifts. Guys, remember the Sahaba, uh, the, the, they used to come, uh, the people, the early Muslims used to come and give gifts to Muhammad. And Muhammad had many houses, right? The sources tell us that Muhammad was married with nine women or even 11 women at the same time, right? Forget about the sex slaves, what Muhammad owned, with what his right hands owned. Muhammad had many sex slaves, but he had also wives, right? And they call them the mother of the believers, like Aisha, Hafza, etc. The wives of Muhammad, the rest of the wives of Muhammad used to complain. At least, Ya Rasulullah, treat us equally. Muhammad became angry. He said, don't hurt me regarding Aisha. Because, Al-Wahi lam yatini wa ana fi ra'atin illa Aisha. Don't hurt me regarding Aisha, Muhammad said. Because divine revelation does not come to me. In the garment of any woman except that of Aisha. Now, do you understand the context? That's the context. Emotional damage. Don't do it. Don't make me angry. Don't attack Aisha. Aisha is special, brother. Aisha is my special baby bride, brother and sister. That's what Muhammad said. If you go to the English translation of this hadith, guys, they lie to the people and they make the word thobe beds. <laughs> we have to show that you many times, right, guys? I'm not going to do it today. But they lie and they deceive non-Arabic speaking Muslims. They say that thobe means a bed. <laughs> Pure deception in its false translation, right? We know what thobe means. We know what thobe means. And here's another hadith to back it up. Look, Aisha reports this following hadith, and the hadith is, the chain of narration is highly, highly sahih. That's what it says here. Why? Because uh, Imam Muslim, Imam Muslim graded it, 
Abu Daoud graded it, and Nisai graded it, and uh, Ahmed ibn Hamal graded it, and uh, even Ibn Hibban graded it as Sahih. Sahih. Look how many uh, scholars graded it as Sahih. Now, if we scroll up, let's read it first in Arabic. Aisha says, "Why Aisha? Because the 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 Rawi, right? The the reporter, the narrator is Aisha, the mother of the believers." Aisha Umm al is the one who narrates the hadith. So Aisha is the one talking. Okay? Aisha says, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي I found myself I found myself rubbing أَفْرُكُ الْمَنِيَّ Meaning I'm rubbing the semen off. <laughs> Aisha says, I'm rubbing the semen off the thawb min thawbi Rasulullah. Right? So I'm rubbing, I'm scratching off the semen from the garment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah's peace be upon him. Wahua you salli while he's praying. And here is my translation, guys. Narrated Aisha, Sahih. I was scratching off the semen from the garment of Rasulullah while Muhammad was praying. Bam! Emotional damage. Guys, imagine Muslims claim that Muhammad is the final prophet, the best example, yet they don't follow his example because they, well, when they pray, they don't command their wives or sisters or mothers, let's say, to scratch off the semen from their clothing, like Ayusha used to do. While Muhammad is praying, isn't it Sunnah? Ya Muslimun. Isn't this Sunnah? Isn't this the tradition and the teaching of Muhammad? Why are you not following your Prophet is Sunnah? Next time when you pray and you just had sex with your wife, don't immediately throw your clothes in the washing uh, machine. Wait, while you're praying, you have the same clothes on. While you're praying, ask then your wifey to scratch the semen of your clothes like Ayusha, your, the mother of the, of the believers, Ayusha, used to scratch with her fingernails the semen from the garment of Rasulullah. At least follow the sunnah of your prophet. And guys, here's the link of this very, very sahih hadith. At least follow the sunnah of your Rasul. <laughs> Emotional damage. Any Muslim? <laughs> Any <laughs> Lord of mercy, man. The only miracle is, guys, the only miracle in Islam is that there are over a billion zombies out there who claim to be Muslims who believe that Muhammad is really the final prophet of God. This is the only miracle. Yet they don't realize that Muhammad was a filthy son of Satan the offspring of Satan himself. How can this be a prophet of God? How can this be a prophet of God? How can this be a prophet of God? How can this fake fraud scammer be the best of example? The best example? The pattern of conduct? Really? Any guess? Do we have any guess, guys? Skype is open, man. Skype is open. Look. Muslims, are you too scared to call? I know. I mean, I feel you though. I mean, yeah. Rob Christian is scary, guys. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, guys, when I look in my mirror at home, I get scared, especially in the morning, man. Yeah, Rob is very scary. His big teeth. <laughs> Uh, story of my life. Story of my life. Oh man, how embarrassing it is for Muslims to know that they cannot defend Muhammad and this false cult of his Islam. How embarrassing. Guys, guys, 
Muslims here in the West want to tell you that Islam is very peaceful. And they always say, Islam karam al mar'a. Islam gave respect to women. Really? Really? Are you really ch- telling us the truth or are you lying? Who are you trying to deceive Muslims? Do you really believe that Islam gave respect to women? Really? Let's see if that's true. Surah An-Nisa, Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 34. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 34. Look what it says here. Very long uh, uh, ayah, as you see. But let us read it. Men are the manage, uh, managers of the affairs of women. Why? Women can't do that themselves? Well, anyway. For Allah has preferred in bounty one of them over another. And for that they have expended of their property. Righteous women are therefore obedient, guarding the secrets of Allah's guarding, okay? And those you fear, and this is talking to the men, the Muslim men, and O Muslim men, those you fear from your wives, if they are rebellious, admonish them, banish them to their couches, so uh, uh, don't sleep with them, right? Close them behind doors, jail them, and... Beat them emotional damage. I mean, guys, in the United States, as an example, on the streets of the United States, if you see a man beating a dog, if you have any honor, you have any dignity, you're going to give him a citizen arrest, right? You're going to call the police on him because he is torturing a poor dog. What about beating women? Are women in Islam like dogs to be beaten? Honest question. Honest question. Did Allah and his false prophet, did Allah and his false prophet think that women in Islam are dogs to be beaten? Honest question. Any Muslim? Yeah, Muslims always refute me. Yeah, yeah. In their dreams. They only refute me in their dreams, uh, but, um, player faint. Muslims only refute me while dreaming. Any Muslim? Honest question. Did Allah and the false prophet of Islam think that women in Islam are dogs to be beaten? Well, clearly, yes. They are dogs. And he even, Muhammad himself, even compared women with dogs. Watch. Sahih al-Bukhari, and here Aisha herself confirms it. Ayusha, the mother of the believers, confirms it. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5, 5.14, narrated Aisha, the things which annul prayer, uh, the things which annul prayer, right, that stops prayer of men, were mentioned before me. And those were a dog. A dog can stop your prayer. So if you if a dog walks by and he starts to bark, right? A donkey, right? A donkey can annul the prayer of Muslim men. And who? A woman. And Aisha even confirms it. The Muhammad and the Sahaba, she says, you have compared us women to donkeys and dogs. So Aisha was angry. You see it, guys? Aisha was really furious. You, Muhammad, and your Sahaba have compared us to donkeys and dogs. And to the rest of the hadith. But you get the idea. Right? Right? Muhammad and the Sahaba compared women to donkeys and dogs. Why? Because the Muslim women, they're allowed to be de- uh, beaten, as we read in the Quran itself. Beat them. Beat them. Beat the women. If you have only sensing that they are... Uh, if you sense, guys, before, before they become rebellious, if you sense it, 
you can already start to beat the woman, right? Before they commit the act, and uh, because they are not considered to be human beings, and remember Muhammad said, women are naqisatul aql, women are half-brained, they are not human beings, they are donkeys, like dogs and donkeys, because they are good for one thing, to put your seat in them, you're right, right? Women, according to the Quran, they are good for one thing, to put your seed in them, to produce jihadi boys, right? Because they are nothing but donkeys and dogs, for they are all ridden. Women, you are riding them like donkeys and dogs, from behind. What respect, what shish kebab, what falafel. Women are nothing but slaves. Go to the Middle East. See how they treat women. They beat them. They, uh, when they sense that they are disobedient, they, they close the door behind them. They, they literally jail them, treating them like a, a piece of meat. They literally rape their women, guys. I've heard stories. It will drive you crazy. What respect? What, Muslims, stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Any Muslim? Yalla ya khwan. Now guys, if we go to the Quran, if we go back to the Quran, we go to the same chapter, but a couple of ayahs before, actually to the beginning of the chapter, things uh, will become very interesting. If you read the translation, you have no idea what it says then it's handy to have someone like me to explain it. Question. Question. Question to our beloved audience, including the Muslims. We do not hate you Muslims. We are here to show you that you have been deceived all your lives. And we're doing this out of love because the truth should be spread everywhere. Question. Admins, the question is not for you. The admins, please don't answer the question. Maybe if you know the answer. How many wives can a Muslim man have according to the Quran? How many wives can a Muslim man marry according to the Quran? Saul Tarsus, er, Daniel, er, G J. Diaz, er, Jujur, er, Prophet M, er. At my frenzy, I told you it's not for you, but you're wrong also. Uh, all of you. Uh, jo John Doe. Uh, 24. Uh, Mr. Chu. Correct. Nine. Nine wives. Why nine, Rob? Come on, Rob. Rob. Uh, really, Rob? Even... Rob, come on, Rob. You you can't be you can't be serious, right? I am serious. <laughs> Guys, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the sex slaves, okay? As a Muslim man, if you go to war and you capture sex slaves during war, you can have an unlimited number of sex slaves. I'm talking about Muslim women as wives. The number, a correct number. The correct number is nine. Correct number is nine. Yes. Why, Rob? Well, it says here in the Arabic, because remember the Quran is not in English. <laughs> the 
the Quran was supposedly sent down in Arabic according to what the Muslims have always told us. Well, it says here, wa means and. Guys, this tiny letter here, do you see it? This tiny letter means and in the Arabic, right? Wa means and. So if we count three and four and, right? So, sorry guys, let me start again. Two and three and four. How, many, how much is that? Two and three and four. How much is that? Nine. Two plus three plus four. It says here, wa 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 means end. So two and three and four. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> means nine. Exactly. Nine. <laughs> Do you see, guys, uh, that Muslims don't even know their Quran? Allah says nine. Yet Muslims uh, call Allah a liar and they say it's four. <laughs> Guys, um, most of you didn't know, uh, know the answer, right? I'm happy that you're learning something new about the Quran, about the, this filthy cult of Satan, uh, of the fraud prophet Muhammad, the fake prophet, the satanic prophet Muhammad. Andrew Martin, you yourself just gave the answer, bro. It's nine. Not one. On top of that, brother, on top of that, this eye actually destroys Muhammad. Why? Because if you can't treat your wives equally, right, then marry only one. If you think you, you are not capable of treating them equally, right, then only marry one, Allah says. But wait, in the last ayah, oh, sorry, last hadith, did Muhammad treat his wives equally? Hmm. No, because he took Aisha over the other wives, right? Aisha used to receive more gifts. When the wives of Muhammad complained, Ya Rasulullah allows to have as much gifts as Aisha is getting. Muhammad said, no, 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 no. Don't hurt me regarding Aisha, Sahih al-Bukhari. Because I received divine revelation in the garment of no other woman than Ayusha. Right? On top of that, what about Sauda exactly, Phil Herrera? I was almost talking about Sauda, but you was much for, uh, faster than I uh, was today. Thank you, Phil. Sauda, Muhammad, did not treat her equally with the rest of the women. She became old and Muhammad did not want to sleep with her. Right, he, uh, she says, uh, "I know you don't want to sleep with me anymore. You know what? I'm, uh, please don't divorce me." She says that Muhammad was about to divorce her. She said, "Ya Rasulullah, please don't divorce me. I will give my day. I will give my day to Aisha." So what equally? What shish kebab? So by the logic of the Quran, by the standard of the Quran, Muhammad is in hellfire again. Exactly, Shai. Muhammad himself did not treat his own wives equally. We have the example of Sauda, but we have also the other example that Aisha was the special bride. Muhammad allowed his Sahaba and the rest of the Muslims to give her more gifts than the other wives. When the wives started to complain, Muhammad said, no, no, Aisha is not equal to you, in other words. Any Muslim? Any Muslim? <laughs> you see how, how easy it is, guys, to destroy Muhammad? 
and prove that Muhammad is above his Quran. Muhammad is above Allah. Muhammad is the real God of Islam. Guys, Muhammad literally is pissing on his own Quran. Literally. He's above the Quran. He's above Sharia Allah. He's above the Sharia. Muhammad is literally the real God of Islam. Because why? Because Muhammad is the cult leader. He created Islam with the help of Khadija, his first wife, and Waraka, and uh, Rahabu Hayra, right? Muhammad is a true cult leader. Like any cult leader, eventually he, you will see uh, him by his own actions and fruit. By their fruit, you will know them. The Bible said, right? We know. We know. Yeah, he literally thought that he was gone. No one dared to question Muhammad. No one dared to question Muhammad, his actions. Right? What equally what shish kebab? What respect for women in Islam, guys? What respect? Here is more. Is there any Muslim? I have a question about Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Ayah 37. Any Muslim? Any Muslim out there who can tell me what this ayah is about? Yes, shall be the exactly. <laughs> yeah. Jindin Muhammad thought Sauda is fat. She became old. She's not sexy anymore. So then why did Muhammad marry her if he had the idea to divorce her anyway? But because she begged him not to divorce her, Muhammad said, okay, you know, this poor old woman, uh, she's, old, so she's about to cry, let me not divorce her. Right? How, what equal, what shish kebab, what falafel, what hummus on the side? Any Muslim? I have a question about this very damaging ayah. You have always lied to us, Muslims. Why are you always lying in your false translations? Any Muslim? No Muslims? Wow. We have 241 people watching and not one Muslim call, dares to call in on Skype? Wow. Muslims, let me show you that you have been deceived. And if there are Muslim ladies watching, let me show you what Allah called you. What Allah called you, Muslim ladies. He called you Uruban Atraba. False translation. What else is new? Look, guys. These are one, two words. For two words, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight <laughs> words back in English? <laughs> what what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> Muslims, what happened here? <laughs> Any Muslim? Hello? 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 Is it me that you're looking for? The miracle of translation, yeah. Uruban Atraba. Now, guys, let's see what Uruban means. The first word. Here is my proof that this is false translation. Watch. I found this very beautiful book. A book that is about sex, sex, and nothing but sex. Written by Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, who wrote Tafsir al The Same guy. Right? Same guy, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Giant among giant scholars, right? The giant Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti himself. In his book called Shaqaq al-Atraj fi Raqaq al-Hunj, Shaqaq al-Atraj fi Raqaq al-Hunj, erotic book, sex book, he explains what Allah is trying to say in the Arabic. He explains what Allah is trying to say in the Arabic. False modern translation, like always, False. They deceive you Muslims. More than 90% of all Muslims on this planet, they don't speak Arabic. So they are dependent on false 
translations done by scammers and deceivers. Guys, like those uh, Nigerian scammers or these Indian scammers who will try to scam you on the phone, right? Same. They are scamming the poor, gullible Muslims who don't speak Arabic and don't know Arabic. So let us go to scholars. I'm not a scholar. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm going to read to you what your scholar said about Uruban Atraba in chapter 56, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Ayah 37. Are you ready, guys? Give me one if you're ready, Muslims. <laughs> Not all of you together. <laughs> Give me one, guys. Give me one. Let, let me show you what Allah tried to say about the Muslim women who will go to Jannah. The context is about Muslim women who will go to Jannah. Allah called them Uruban Atraba. Uruban Atraba. Thank you, Uruban Atraba. In this book, we will find the answer. Look, قال الله تعالى Allah the Most High said في صفات نساء أهل الجنة for uh, uh, the description of the women in, uh, the, the women, the inhabitant women, the females of Jannah. So basically, when you go to Jannah as a Muslim lady, So uh, we are talking here about the same chapter, Ayahs 35 to 37, especially Aruban Atraba. It says here, أطبق المفسرون وأهل اللغة على إن العرب جمع عربة أو عرب وإنها القحبة Emotional damn it Let me make it a little bit bigger عربة أطرابة according to the commentators for the Quran all of them and the scholars of the Arabic languages. There you go. So in other words, Muslim women who will go to Jannah, these could be your mothers and sisters, Muslim ladies who are watching and listening, Allah in his Quran called you Qahba. You are whores. You are nothing but whores in the eyes of Allah. You're going to be a piece of meat. Allah will recycle you like the whore that you are. And these are not my words. These are the words of Allah. Allah called Muslim women whores? Yes. 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 <laughs> I mean, what, what filth is Islam, man? Where is the respect of women? Down to the toilet, right? The respect of women in Islam went down to the toilet. Now, do you understand what Muhammad used to think of women? Muhammad didn't think highly of women, guys. Claiming that it's Allah calling him that. Muhammad literally wanted to have as much as women inside his bed. To have them and to treat them like horse. Now, do you understand why Allah made muta halal prostitution? Because Muslim women are whores. Muslim women in Islam are ho whores. Qahba. Qahba, here's the word. Qahba. And here is my translation. We showed you the book, the cover of the book, the reference on top, the source. Shaqaq al atraj fi raqaq al hunj. Maybe you want to take a screenshot, guys, or a selfie on your phone. For chapter 56, ayah 37. By the Jalal al al Suyuti. As Suyuti explains the meaning on page 69 for chapter 56, ayah 37. Uruban Atraba, transliteration, the way you say it in the Arabic, Uruban Atraba. I even put the transliteration for you guys. The commentators for the Quran, the, all of them, and the scholars of the Arabic language agreed that Urub is the plural of Arub and Uruban means hor qahba. You see it? Qahba. I mean, how is this not a cult of Satan? How is Allah not Satan? 
I mean, I, I can expect this from Satan. But you Muslims claim that Allah is God. Well, clearly your God that you worship is nobody else but Satan. Why? Because he's calling you whores. Do you have any dignity? I'm, I'm talking to the Muslim man. Do you have any dignity? Do you have any honor? Do you have any respect for your, uh, for your wives and, and, and mothers? Your mothers are being called whores. Your mothers that carried you for nine months in their bellies are called by Allah and his prophet whores. And how do they translate it? By lying and calling it the beloved of their husband of one age. <laughs> I mean, these are two words, man. Oruban. One word, two words. Especially the first word. The first word. Oruban. Whore. Uh, Asuyuti guys didn't even care to explain what the second word means. <laughs> he, uh, he, he cared more about what the Uruban means. Uruban. Qahba. So in other words guys, Muslim women are nothing but women of the streets. Right? Women of the streets. Man, man, man. The only miracle, guys, again, is that there are over a billion idiots out there who believe that Islam is the truth. That Allah is God. And Muhammad is a true prophet. How can you accept this if you have any morality, Muslims? How is Islam not created by a sexually confused, perverted man like Muhammad? How can this be from God? Be honest to yourselves. Do you respect yourselves, women? Women. Ya, ya ukhta. Ya ukhta. Muslim ladies, listen. Sisters in humanity. Do you accept this about yourself? Allah calling you qahba? Be honest. Do you have any dignity? Do you have any self-respect, women, in Islam? If you have, leave Islam. If you don't have, stay in Islam. Then Islam is good for you. On top of that, and I'm going to finish with this ayah. Surah At-Talaq, At-Talaq, the divorce, right? The surah is called divorce. Look. You see it? Divorce. At-Talaq means divorce. Okay, thank you very much. We scroll down and we go to ayah 4. It's talking here in the beginning of the ayah about women who, who are old age and can't menstruate anymore. Right? They can't menstruate anymore because they are old. Let's say you become, you reach your 50s, um, you can't menstruate, meaning uh, you cannot become pregnant anymore. And Allah then continues saying, if you doubt, maybe uh, such a woman is still uh, pregnant, wait for three months if you divorce her. The waiting period for such a divorced woman is three months. Maybe she's she's carrying a child. So to make sure, right, if, if her husband divorces her, that woman must wait three months. After three months, she's allowed to marry again. So that's the context, right, guys? She must wait, wait three months, and we call that idda, the waiting period. She must wait three months. That's the waiting period for a woman who wants to remarry again. Okay, guys? Idda. Yeah, Idda. Just Janice, exactly. Idda. But Allah continues. A filthy Allah, filthy Satan Allah and his prophet, they continue. And also for those who have not yet had their menstruation. That for this, these little girls, talking about little girls, why? Why, Rob? Those are the little girls who are so young they are they did not e even reach the age of menstruation yet. Did you catch it? So even those little girls, let's say they are two years, three years, four years, five years, such little girls who are married, if you are if you divorce her, if you divorce these little girls, they also must wait three months. Maybe this little girl is uh, pregnant. Allahu alam. Allah the filthy pimp even allows you to be a pedophile. Do you see, guy? This part is about the little girls. Little girls 
who did not reach the age of menstruation yet. So Allah allows you to be a pedophile. There you go. Congratulations, Muslims. Pedophilia is halal. Pedophilia is halal, brothers and sisters. You see, Muslims, Allah is really Satan. Allah is truly Satan, and Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. Forget about the satanic verses, guys. This eye on itself proves that Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. How can a holy God allow you to be a pedophile? These little girls did not reach the age of puberty yet. They did not even start to bleed. They did not bleed yet. Now guys, I'm not a scholar. Let's say I'm lying. Let's say Rob Christian is lying. Does not mean little girls who did not bleed yet. What about a Jalalain? Is Jalalain, does he know the Quran better than me, guys? He's a scholar. I'm not a scholar. So let us go to the scholars. Same chapter, same ayah. Surat, Surat At-Talaq, ayah 4, by Jalaluddin al-Suyuti. We scroll down, look. Same, and he's now going to explain what this part means. And also for those who have not yet had menstruation. Look. Jalalain explains, and also for those who have not yet menstruated, well, who are they? Who are they? Ya Mufassir. O commentator, Asuyuti. Who are they? They are the young little girls. Also, for them, they have to wait three months because maybe they are pregnant. Maybe this little three-year-old is pregnant. So she must wait three months. The waiting period called the Idda. She must, she must wait three months for another pedophile Muslim to marry her again. Just to make sure that she's not pregnant. She must wait to remarry again. So you see, guys, pedophilia is okay. Pedophilia is okay. Pedophilia is okay. And effing little girls who did not reach menstruation yet is okay. You can eff them. Effing them. Literally effing them. Do you see, guys? There's nothing called uh, marriage in Islam. It's all about effing. Nikah means effing. Pedophilia all over the place. Show me one good thing about Islam. I challenge you, Muslims. Show me one good thing about the teaching of Muhammad. One good thing. Challenge. Everything in your Quran, your ahadith, your tafasir, your books are evil from Satan. Allah is Satan. Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. Guys, maybe a Jalalain doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a kafir, a zandiq. He's a heretic. What about Ibn Kathir? <laughs> Same chapter. Same ayah. Ibn Kathir. We scroll down. Look, talking about the idda, the waiting period. About the older women. We scroll down to understand this part again. Wallahi lam yahid. We have a Muslim, uh, Muslim caller, a guest. Let's see. Hello? Oh, uh, hello? Yeah, hello. How are you doing? I'm hello, good. How are you hello. Doing? Hello. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. My friend, are you a Muslim, my friend? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Are you a Sunni Muslim? What are you exactly? You know what? I'm I'm a Muslim. You know. Uh, I know you're gonna say Shia Sunni. Yeah, but I wanna that, know. Do I, you follow the Sunnah? I don't think, you know. Do you I don't do think we should all be you know separated. We're all. I understand. I understand. But do you follow hadith. the Sunnah of your Prophet? Yes or no? You know, like uh, let me just answer your question. No, There's no. You hadith. you you are going to answer my question before we continue. Do you follow the Sunnah of Muhammad? Yes or no? Brother, this you're not. You're are you not embarrassed? Are you embarrassed? -like. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm going to force uh, look, you to answer. answer question, Else, the answer you are not yes. welcome. If you the are too scared yes. to answer, that's a different story. Yes. Are you scared? But can I finish? Okay. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So you're a yes. Sunni. Can you be polite? Can I finish my? Can I finish what I said? Go saying, ahead. Please? Go ahead. But okay. uh, stay on the topic. Yeah. I course, challenge you to stay on the topic. Okay, yeah. No problem. No problem. What I was gonna say is yes, I do follow the hadith. There is some hadith, yeah, that do come from unreliable sources. So mm. it's up to the individual Muslim to do the research for themselves, mm -hmm. okay? 
and find out who 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 who's who is uh passing down this information and where it comes from okay that's mm. very important okay okay so i hope that answered your question yeah thank no you very much you. okay nah, but before you go before you go I'm what not, do you think no, about I'm, pedophilia? Do you are you okay listen, with the pedophilia listen, of Allah, the I, pedophile himself? No, no problem. But let I, I called you to ask you something. Okay, you but but wait, politics. wait. We, I'm yeah. having a topic, and you're calling in because clearly oh, you can your, refute your, can me. Can I ask you a question? I can refute you. No okay. problem. Okay. Okay. Do you I see the screen? Okay. Okay. Do you see the screen? Yeah, of course I can see the screen. Uh, okay. Tell me yeah, about. Yeah. Are you okay with the pedophilia of Allah? Or allows you to be a pedophile? Elaborate. Elaborate. What do you mean? Elaborate. Go. What do you mean? Well, when I read this ayah, it's talk. Be yeah. specific. Please. Okay. Surah at talaq that you see in front of you, ayah four. Can you read it for me, please? Read. No, start I with can't. the Arabic. Start with the Arabic first. I can't. It's still on the green screen. It's on green screen. Just read it. Read it. Read it. Green the screen. At the same time, the screen on my YouTube is delayed to yours. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So it's not delayed. It. Refresh it. Refresh it. Make sure to mute it. There's no Arabic on my screen, mate. Yes, it is. Let me send you a picture. Okay, do you have a Quran? Do you have a Quran at home? No, hang on, hang on. You said yes, it is. You see, if I put my screen, would you be well, able to see it? Well, everybody is seeing it. People are seeing it. Come, stop with the with the taqiyya, man. Come on, man. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, look, look. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Refresh it, man. You did. You no, need. No, don't you stop apologize? it. Refresh it. Refresh. Can you apologize, please? No, apologize, I am not going to please. apologize because. So you lied. No, so you, you are lied. lying. You are lying. Mate, I told you there's no Arabic on my screen. You said I'm lying. I just yes. Told you my refresh it, man. Arabic. Refresh it. At least I refresh did. it. I did. I did. No, you didn't. Okay. okay. Watch me do it again. Refresh it. Again. Refresh okay. it. No problem. Those who only have ah, so I did not lie. You are the liar. Thank you. No, very you much. did lie. You said you said there wasn't. Arabic okay, 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 okay. Stop, stop with excuses. Read the Arabic. Read the Arabic. Read the Arabic first, because the Quran is in Arabic, not in English, right? Arabic, not English. Read it out loud first. To Arabic. You read Arabic. Did you ask me if I can read Arabic? Are you a psychic? I'm not a Muslim. You are the Muslim. Don't you pray in Arabic? Okay, question. Don't you pray in Arabic? Don't you pray in Arabic? In your ear. Was the Quran sent down in Arabic or English? Is Jesus talking in your ear? You want to change topic? If you want to change topic and you can't behave like a human being who can answer questions. Read the Arabic, mate. Okay, if I read the Arabic here. Wallahi lam yahadun. Can you tell me what that means? At least these three words. What does it mean? Mate, this isn't a language lesson. Hurry up. Like, okay. Go on, okay, let me teach you. It means yeah, those little girls who did not reach the age of menstruation yet. The ayah, the, the, the ayah is in the chapter called divorce. Okay. First, the first part is about women who are old. They cannot menstruate anymore because they are simply old. Meaning, uh, if you divorce them, also they have to wait three months to remarry again. This Talking about divorce and marrying. And uh, the context is the adda, the waiting period, is what? Three months. You see it? Three months. The appointed period, the adda, is three months. You agree? Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. What does it say on uh, number three? The, the paragraph before that, just so I can read all together. What's the paragraph before that? The, you mean the happened. ayah? You mean the ayah, not paragraph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The ayah. What's the, I okay, read, read, yeah. read nice it. One. From there, read from it there. hard. Read it hard up. Okay. Read it hard so that people can hear you, man. Come on, man. Stop nah, playing games, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, I'm read. The, are you are you scared to read the Quran? I'm not doing it for the people. I'm reading so I. No, can I, 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 so I, I want to hear you read, man. Come on, man. Are if, you embarrassed to you recite wanna, the Quran in English? If you want to read, read for your audience, mate. That's you, innit? I'm You're reading. the Muslim. This is your Quran, not mine. I just relax so I can understand what I'm reading and I'll give you an answer, yeah? Okay, relax. Okay. I'll okay, give you, I will give you some time. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. Two seconds. I don't need a lot of time. Two seconds. It's okay. Okay, so you never expect it. Indeed, all things 
Okay, can you go to IR4 now? Okay, let us go to IR4. Okay. Read it. Wait, hang on. And, and also, for those who have not yet had menstruation and the appointed period for the pregnant woman is up to the time they deliver okay okay so what what have you learned now from this aya aya four what have you learned what does this mean the first part so if they're obviously talking about divorce they're basically saying that what does it mean for those of your women who have no hope for menstruation what does that mean they've passed, they're going through menopause. That's what that means. Exactly. Okay? So they are yeah. old women who cannot become pregnant. Yeah. And Allah like says to make sure... Let's break it down one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I, my friend, you, you see, I'm not here to fight you. We are here yeah. for the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay. Okay. 100%. So Allah says, if you are in doubt about them, if you, you know, want to get married again to such a lady, that lady must wait for three months, her idda, the idda period, the waiting period is three months. So she made, she must wait. Allah commands such a woman who is divorced to wait three months to remarry again, right? No, 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 no. That's not what it says. Basically, what it's, what it's saying, yeah, what mm -hmm. it says is if you have doubt, yeah. Uh, doubt yeah. about what? D doubt. Because it. You don't, you're not. When you have yeah. doubt about a, a, a divorced woman who just got divorced. What is that no, doubt? No, no, no. Where's the context for that? Because right now it's saying if you've got doubt. Doubt, okay, doubt for what? what? Yeah, you, yeah where, where's, where's that information? Okay, what is That's the doubt? Important. You are the Muslim. Explain to me. I want to learn Wait, from where's you. Where's the ayah that shows the context of this ayah? Where's that ayah? Because Wait. there's doubt. If you doubt, if you doubt what? Doubt, of, doubt, doubt what? what? Doubt what? Yeah. That's the question. You know the Quran better than me. Please teach me. I, Mate, I'm here to I'm learn not, from you. I listen. I'm not a silly guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not so a silly guy too. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so sitting here for we're, three we're hours. We're gonna have a good conversation. So can you please show mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. the context of okay? When Which uh, do you accept Ibn Kathir? Do you accept Ibn Kathir? Is Ibn Kathir good enough for you? Is it is, is Sahih? Ibn Kathir, uh, uh, I think he's a no trustworthy problem. scholar, right? No or problem. Let's okay. go. Let's, Let's go. go to Ibn Kathir. Here. No problem. Ibn Kathir, do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Chapter 65, ayahs 4 and 5, right? Same chapter, same ayah, right? Yeah. Okay. You said it correctly. The first part is about the idda of those in menopause and those who don't have menses. So uh, women, old women, uh, women who can't become, uh, she, they cannot menstruate anymore, right? Yeah. yeah. Menopause is some, a woman who is old, right? She can... You know, a certain age, she cannot pe become pregnant anymore, right? Yeah. Okay. We scroll down, right? We scroll down, we see that uh, still uh, the Ibn Kathir in his tafsir is explaining that uh, because of the old age, right? Stop to their, her older age. We continue, it says her idda, the waiting period in Arabic, is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate right okay. and he's giving a, a lot of information then he's going now to explain the second part this part here and also for those let me who have you. not just a second let me finish my i allowed you to speak yeah, no, yeah, allow sir. me to speak Continue. and also for those according to the ayah in the quran and also for those who have not yet had menstruation ibn kathir explains who they are look the same for the young, young girls, right? You agree, right? Because it's talking about women, right? Women and girls. Yes? Yeah, yeah, the same for young girls. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Also, their waiting period is three months. Like those old women no, who, no, no, who no. are when in menopause. Age, who have not reached the age of menstruation. Okay, who yeah. are those? 
mate, that is from that's from that's basically from puberty all the way. Let's say fifty five. If a, a woman's lucky, let's say fifty five. Are you a uh, brother? I have a question. When you went to school, to question. Five. When you went to school, did you pass your reading uh, uh, exams? At, uh, in elementary school. Be honest. Do I need to teach you how to read English too? Not only Arabic, but also English. Rob, you said men. Did you say read it again? Read the highlighted part again. Read, read. The same for the young who have not reached the. Have age. what? Have what? Have what? Uh, what? What comes after the word have? Menstruation. Who have what? Menstruation. Okay. No, no. Read it correctly. You're not reading it correctly. Who have what? Mate, I said who have not reached the age. Okay, who? What kind of little girls? What? What kind of? Uh, give me, no. uh, give me an example of ages of listen. little girls who did not reach, the, who cannot bleed, basically. Listen, a little girl that is three I, years old, four, I, maybe four or five. I, I made a mistake there. I thought it said did not reach the uh, age of menopause. Uh, menopause. So, oh, are you okay? With Allah allowing Muslim men like you to go maybe to your, maybe your brother, maybe you uh, fell in love, uh, sorry, not your brother, your uncle, let's say. Your uncle has a three years old girl, basically your cousin. You go to your uncle, you say, you know, I fall in love with your three years old girl. I know she did not reach the age of bleeding yet. But can I sleep with her? Can I marry her and sleep with her? Is that okay with you, uncle? Will you agree with that Allah allows you to be a pedophile? Be honest. Are you Are you going to let me answer the question? Yes. Are you gonna, bro, I'm, okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Nice one. Okay. This is what I think the answer to that question is. Okay. You see, in the Quran, it mentions here yeah, that, you know, uh, the Arabs, you know, were the uh, the last group, you know, to receive uh divine revelation you know uh, their behavior you know, wait wait who is receiving divine re revelation who is receiving divine revelation the arabs the arabs yeah. received divine revelation of course i thought muhammad only received divine revelation when I, you know what i mean stop why did you interrupt me you know because what I mean? because i'm you asking you a very you said something so they i need to address given, it they got given a message which is divine you know what i mean you muhammad or the arabs just to be specific. Listen, ma obviously, Muhammad, you know. Okay, you know, okay so, on, the, so not the Arabs, Muhammad. So okay, continue. Right, cool. Continue, all continue. All right, all right, okay. cool. All right, cool. So you have to understand, yeah, okay. There's obviously certain behavior. For example, yeah, they used to bury their daughters, yeah, for example, okay. These things they used to do, you know, uh, which it, to normal people, you know, you would say, oh, that's barbaric. Do you, do you understand? So there's certain behaviors. And what has that to do with this ayah, man? Come what on, do you mean man. what it has to do with this ayah? Okay, well, where does it say that? Why well, are I'm you... Fine. We are talking well, about apples. No. We are talking about little girls who listen, did not well, bleed yet. Listen, and you're talking forget, about something about this, Arabs and divine revelation. Stick with, to topic, to stick with the topic. Stick with the ayah, my friend. Don't, listen, don't jump. Your culture, regardless of this book here, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pertains to this behavior. Okay? This, this is why the book came. Yeah, for you, for your people, so mm. you could understand how to behave. Because the way you used to do things, yeah, okay, was very, very bad. Yeah, okay, mm. I'm very misguided. Okay, okay, go to the point, my friend. Don't give me speech. No, go to the point. point. What, is the point? Okay, what so is the point? Okay, what is the point? What is the point of your explanation? Say, yeah, give me a I'm small summary. Before the Quran, yeah, yeah, yes. I strongly believe, yeah, yeah, the Arabs, yeah, were partaking in this behavior okay that's what i'm that's what i'm trying okay to, and so what to, so what happens what I'm trying to say is yeah what i'm trying to say is mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. this is a message yeah that is being said to the people that understand okay we are in a time where we take we read the eyes we take it or board it in our mind and we say to ourselves so you asking me would i marry a three-year-old no i wouldn't okay but are you okay with the idea that's listen. you you didn't even listen to my question and i think because you muslims uh always suffer right from I listening wouldn't, I wouldn't my marry. question here is my question again it's my, my question are you okay 
with Allah allowing you to be a pedophile? Oh my days. Listen. Answer the question. Don't tap this. Are you are you no Shakira? One, no are you Shakira to do belly dancing? Answer the question. A pedophile. No one's making anyone do anything. Okay, that's what I'm trying that's to say. That's not my question. My question again, because you have, I think no you one, forgot to do wudu. You no, forgot to do ablution. The what's Satan P is still in your ears. Listen so that you what, can answer. Are you okay with Allah allowing you as a Muslim man to marry a little girl and to sleep with that little girl who did not bleed yet to be a pedophile? Go ahead, answer. No. No? Okay. So Allah is a filthy God, right? And Muhammad no. is a filthy no. son of Satan. Allah is, no. uh, Allah is Satan. No. And if no. Are you going to stop? Are so you, gonna you, stop you just pissed on Allah's Quran, right? Are you going to stop and listen? Okay, listen. Are you going to stop and listen? listen. Thank Guys, you, yeah. he said no, right? It's recorded. I right, listen. Stop being childish, yeah? Okay. No, okay. Yeah. We live in a time now, like I'm trying to say, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Where each individual has to now read and make a choice in themselves, their character, which they'll be judged on day of judgment day okay so mm. you need to understand but you didn't answer yourself. my question no, you no, only I said no but why no no so, I so you are you are not okay with allah you allowing you kid? to be a pedophile are you a little kid i already answered that have you got a memory problem I no, said no 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 so just yeah? to confirm just to confirm Stop you are not okay me. with allah okay. allowing muslim man to sleep with little girl you're not okay with Stop. that Stop interrupting me. I already answered that question. You're you're acting like a child, okay? I'm, Listen, guys, I'm, I'm the one you acting like doing. a child, yet he has to believe that Allah allows you to sleep with little children, and I'm the one acting like a child. That's yeah. why you're interrupting sense, me, because you sense. don't want me to finish. Yeah? Yeah? You Be see, mature. you are such a coward. Let me tell you Be as mature. it is. You are such a coward. You are such a coward okay. that you can't even answer the, the, the question correctly. Yes, you said no, but you at least be a man and say Allah, what Allah is saying here is not okay. Say it. You are against uh, the pedophilia of Allah and his false prophets. Say it as it is. Don't tap dance. You, you are not Shakira. Don't belly dance. You are not Shakira. You are not Michael said, Jackson. Yeah. Don't I do said, the moonwalking, man. I said, yeah. What? Look, look, look. You're not understanding what I'm trying to say. The things you guys, yeah, yeah, forget, forget religion for a second no I'm no no we're you. not we're talking about people, islam i'm not going to forget the things that you 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 guys used to do as a people yeah yeah who yeah. is you who what, is you i'm not a muslim this is not my quran what country are you from forget the quran what country i'm from, from the middle and i'm from the middle east and what i'm disgusted tribe? of what islam tribe? i'm so disgusted what, what of your fake you prophet that i'm spanking you muhammad from? you can't do anything about it that's where i'm from mate what mate, tribe mate, are you from? Mate. Where are you? Where where the from? Where what like what country are you from? Who are you? you I'm know what I mean? I'm today I'm according to my VPN, I'm from the United Kingdom. Guys, Jesus said yeah that he was yeah. going to come. Bye. Bye. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What has Jesus to do with the pedophilia of Allah who allows you to be a pedophile? Just go, man. Coward. Guys, at least I made him say no, right? At least I made him say no, no. It's recorded, so you're not a Muslim. No, it's recorded. So you're Mute not YouTube. a Muslim. Mute YouTube. YouTube. No, it's recorded. Mute YouTube. <laughs> you're funny, you know. You've got. Yeah. I like the techniques. You've got no, no, it's not about this technique. Like it. It's not about this technique. Is why you you are a coward. You know you, at least you said no. Why no. Am I a coward? But why you why are, I I you know why? why? Because coward, because you know? if you are a real man who lives in 2022, you should know that the Quran is until judgment day is for always, right? Is the Quran only for the 7th century? Or did Muhammad give you the Quran for all times? So where does it say in the Quran to, so you have to marry a three-year-old? Go on, go on, tell me where it says that. Go are, you, are you, are you, are you, honest, are you stupid or what? No, are you stupid? Because you said it's for the all of the lifetime, so... Where does it say, where does it instruct men to commit pedophilia? Go on, tell me. Chapter Go 65, on. Ayah 4. If you listened in no, the beginning, no, no, no. It didn't shut up so I can must. answer your question. Go on, Listen. show me. Go on. Go I on. never said if you are listening and you take the camel urine, I mean the camel, Bro, listen, the piss of, of Satan out of your ears, Mate, you, have learned, you have I'm learned like how to audience. listen. Go on, listen. Shh. Shh. Go on, Go on. hurry up, hurry up. Listen. Are you going to Go shut on. up? Are you going to hurry shut up so that I can answer? Are you, going, are you allowing me to speak? Okay. I never said that Allah said to you as a Muslim man, you must 
become a pedophile. If okay. you live, shh, good, shh, good. Shh, shh, shh. let me finish. You ask good, a question, good. allow me to finish. Good, good. I Thank said, you. Allah allows you to be a pedophile. Okay, Rob Christian, what's free will? What's free will? Donkey, Eben Donkey. What's free will? What has that to do with the topic, man? Enough, man. Go play somewhere else. Idiot. Free will, guys. Free will. What is free will, brother? What is free will, brother? Idiot. The question is, are you allowed by Allah in chapter 65, ayah 4, to marry and F little girls who did not bleed yet? According to Allah, it's okay. As long if you're going to divorce them, those little girls, that little girl also must wait three months. Her idda, the waiting period, is three months, like the woman on top who reached the age of menopause, who cannot become pregnant due to old age. Then Allah talks about little girls who did not bleed yet. If you are married to them, if you are married to such a little girl, you are a little Muslim pedophile like your prophet who married Aisha at five years old. You remember, guys, six, when you say six in Arabic, it means five. When uh, you say nine, it means eight. So Muhammad literally married Aisha at the age of five and he had he effed her at the age of eight. Right? If you know uh, anything about uh, Arabic tradition, you will understand what I'm saying, right? If you are a pedophile, Allah says, and you married a little girl who did not bleed yet, also she must wait three months. If you divorce her, she must wait three months to remarry again. Why? Because maybe the new husband will get in trouble. These are not his children, right? Maybe she's carrying a little girl, uh, this little girl. Maybe she's carrying according to Allah. And Allah is stupid. Allah doesn't understand that a little girl who is three years old, she cannot become pregnant because her womb is not fully developed yet. But Allah is stupid. What can we do? This is the wisdom. This is the hikmah of Muhammad and his Allah. Allah is illiterate like his prophet. What can we do, guys? Also, the period is three months for waiting. Allah is fool. What can we do? Allah thinks that little girls that are three or four years, or maybe two years, or maybe one year, also they can become pregnant. Right? See it? Only in the wisdom of Allah, what can we do? Allah is a filthy idiot, allowing you to be a pedophile. I never said you must be a pedophile. You see guys how Muslims are? They literally force words in our mouths that we did not say. And this happens when you didn't pay attention at school, in elementary school, how to learn to listen. Muslims can't listen. They don't listen. All right? If you have listened, you could have answered the question. So you are forcing me to repeat myself. I'm not here to, uh, to play games with you. Go play somewhere else, man. Ask your imam or maybe uh, the man of the house, your mother, to call me instead. I am not here for games. I'm happy that he said no, though. It's recorded, though. Any other Muslim? No waste, no waste for times, man. I don't, I don't, I don't want to waste my time, man. No Muslims, guys. Uh, I closed Skype. I closed it. I'm tired. My throat is killing me. Let's wrap things up, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. Pray for this gentleman who just called me, guys. He is a deluded idiot who doesn't know what he's talking about. I literally had to teach them. I literally had to teach them him about 65 IF4. He didn't even know. He called me. He didn't even know why he called me. I'm having a topic. At least focus before you call, man. Why are you calling me if you don't know what, it, what I just said? Uh, 13 above. Thank you. I appreciate it. We are here to serve. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, get, God bless you. Thank you for being here. I really tried to go live earlier than today, but as you know, uh, I'm still sick. Pray for my health so that we can do this uh, again. 
fully recovered 100%. Pray for my family. Pray for our families. Pray for my beloved audience in the blue. Pray, pray for all the warriors who are risking their lives in exposing this evil cult of Satan. Who allows you, allows you, listen, allows you to be a pedophile like your prophet, Muhammad. Allows you to be a pervert, a pedophile, a filthy son of Satan. Because Allah is nobody else but Satan. He allows you to do muta. Yet we see when we do some investigation, it was Omar who abrogated muta. Not Muhammad, not Allah. In the end, these theological disasters are only in your cult, Muslims. Please leave Islam. Stop worshipping Allah who is nobody else but Satan. There is no salvation in Islam, Muslims. We are here not to fight you. We are here for the truth. It's on you, Muslims. Please wake up and leave Islam. Drop Muhammad and come back home to Jesus Christ, who is the true Savior. Please wake up. Guys, thank you for watching. And like always, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but a filthy fraud. God bless you. They use Vult. We will see each other in a new live stream, in a new video to come. God bless you. Go with the peace of Christ. May the living God of the Holy Bible, the historical Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, bless you, your household, your families and loved ones. See you very soon. God bless.